conduct a public hearing Wednesday. Uh, were we already open? Yeah. Were we already open? Pretty sure we did. We did, right? This is the second continuation. God, that's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> now that well, at least you realize your mistake. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're not going to do that again. <laughs> All right, continued hearing, and uh, we have a brief presentation by just announce your name and your position uh, with the applicant. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Chip thank Nutter. You. I'm an architect uh, representing the Institution for Savings. Um, I'll just take you through uh, their proposed addition at their property at 312 Haverhill Street. This is the existing site plan. Um, this being Haverhill Street and entrance, parking, parking, drive-through, three drive-through lanes, and then exit back onto Haverhill Street. We will not be doing making any changes to the site plan at this time. Um, what we're going to be proposing is an addition on top of the canopy of the existing drive-through. And it's building three new offices on top of the existing canopy. Uh, we have to remove an existing office in this area, and there are two people in that, so they'll be moving into this space, and the other person in this space is already doubled up someplace inside the building. Um, then we're going to be adding some storage space. The um, addition is designed as a roof plan. Thank you. It's designed to fit in, to look like it's part of the original building. This is the drive through canopy. There's a couple of tiers right now. Currently, there's a, a balustrade railing similar to this on top of this. We're going to be replacing that with this brick faced addition. The gable roof at the end. From Hazel Street. There's the drive through Here are the drive through lanes. There's an ATM in this lane. And um, that's the facing addition with another gable. And we're going to be adding some balustrade, some reports on the existing building. On the roof of that, and in the rear of the building, is very similar. It just doesn't have a gable addition. So um, the square footage of the project <coughs> is uh, 300, 650 square feet. Um, there's no plan to add any employees to the project at this point. And, uh, and no changes to the site plan at this point. Do you have any questions? Is this similar to what was presented the previous time? I haven't identified. I think I moved this door from here to there. <laughs> That's, exactly, That's what I did. I yeah. didn't catch that. <laughs> Uh, do board members have any questions? So we'll start the, this, um, we have in front of us a uh, certificate of vote for the modification of special permit approval conditions, and this is a modification of the, um, the plan that was dated back in 2007 and revised in 2008. Um, the conditions include uh, no staffing beyond current staffing levels, um, any substantial revisions to site plan uh, that would have to come back in, uh, which that has already been stated that's not the case. And then also, and Charlie, you can see that I had the fire department uh, chief uh, had concerns with uh, because it is an addition over an empty space that a fire protection plan be submitted determining how the fire resistance of the ceiling of the overhang of the drive through tellers and the floor and the proposed new office space will be accomplished and a detailed plan on how the fire alarm system be updated for live detection, which is which is done anyway by course when you add an addition because uh, this building, uh, I believe, is not sprinkler at this time. That's correct. Jeff, you said this is not... Sprinkler, correct? It's not. It's a non-sprinkled building. So that only makes sense. So those conditions are the only conditions that were added um, per the fire department's comments. The um, uh, conservation commission uh, comments uh, came today. Uh, I don't even think I need to uh, read them completely because I think the board knows the location of this. Um, it's in the riverfront protection area, it's in the floodplain, it's in the uh, buffer zone, all three. Yeah, I have a and it's stated, you know, it's, 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 it's yeah. I mean, the conclusion is, is yeah, I'm going to go on this, get to the conclusion. Right. Yeah. I think it's important for the board before we take the vote to know that the Conservation Commission, because of the number of resource areas that this site is in, 
um, at best can be determined at this time. Yes, Thank you. A proposed project, and this came in uh, today, three o'clock. Doesn't appear to alter, dredge, fill, or remove a regulated wetland resource area due to its occurrence on the existing first level of the existing structure. Uh, therefore, an application filing with the Conservation Commission doesn't appear necessary. The proposed project doesn't appear to have any impact on stormwater generation from this site. Uh, and I already mentioned the resource areas that the site is in. Um, any other questions? So those are the, the two. Uh, I, think, I think the board is very aware that if, if parking was vis revisited at a different time, they would have to come back to work. Um, but similar to this, do we need to, does this board need to uh, take a vote uh, on whether um, modification under our flood plain bylaw would, would be appropriate, which I don't think it would be for these very reasons, but right. but would it make sense to just formalize that, that determination with a vote? And that's what we request. Oh, yeah, right. We have a letter requesting okay. that. All right, thank you. Make a motion for that. And for the vote. Okay, I'll move that due to the uh, minimal, if any, impact that this project would have on the floodplain. Probably Charlie's showing a zero sign. Um, <laughs> that, that, no, that it's not necessary for the applicant to request a modification from this board of the floodplain, floodplain special permit. I'll second. You can write that down. Oh, okay. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Cliff here made the motion. They don't need a floodplain special permit. And, uh, Eugene Petrillo seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, to unanimous vote. And did you have a chance to read the uh, slight modification with the. Thank you. Uh, is, there, is there a site plan review as well? Or is it? It's on both. And I can. Okay. So you, do you have the site plan review? Do you have the site plan review decision as well? Or yes. This is, okay. Yeah, I'm going to be voting on both. Okay, because this but is just better. the special permit. Yeah, it's the same. But I'm saying those two conditions are the same. Right, right. On, right. on, on each, they're added because the, the other ones were the same as well, so I added to both. Yeah, that's fine. So you have both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to vote on them. So. Yeah, perfect. Because um, no, this we, we those are fight code issues we have to do. So, but we had to I, include, yeah. And I have no issue with it. Because we asked for comments and we need to incorporate the appropriate <coughs> comments. Yeah. If there was a condition that said we had to follow oh, all so building, building yeah, code, same. then it would be the same. Yeah. So that's why I don't have an issue with it. We have to do those things anyway. Yeah, I know. I can't even make it this. Um, any other questions? Larry? Oh, uh, Larry? Nope. So Larry Graham, our review engineer, is no more uh, questions and has been working on uh, with the applicant to come up to the point where we can vote to. Uh, issue a certificate of vote, and that would be for modification. I guess it doesn't matter which order. So uh, I our special permit. We could order. do them at the same time. Okay. okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, site plan uh, modification of site plan with conditions. The assessor's map 14 lot 12 312 Able Street Raleigh Mass, and at the same time approve the modification of special permit at the same site. So moved. Cliff here, second. Second. Second by David Jacob. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I'll sign this and then. Now, yes. regarding the first vote, um, is there any. Um, yeah, I mean, you need a memo? Yeah, a memo or even. Ken, Ken might be fine with a phone call. I don't you know. Who's, who's well, I, I will have, I'll have a phone call first. Yeah, but then I'll want follow up with a memo. Okay, perfect. Through the administration office, okay? Good, perfect, thank you. Because <coughs> uh, they've been doing the minutes for us. Yeah. So it's a matter of public record now. Appreciate it. So, so we can apply for that? Yeah, that'll just give Ken a piece of paper. Did you apply for that? Yeah. No, it's just, waiting. Um, it's just one of each. Uh, you can go ahead and apply. <coughs> Is that something we can do tomorrow morning then? This has to go to Susan Hazen tomorrow morning. Right. The decision does. Yeah. yeah. And then I, the appeal period begins, and then uh, typically you can go to the billing inspector and, uh, at your own risk, uh, right. and depending on his determination. Uh, yeah, he just wanted to. Uh, he, okay want, he wants these. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. And he also wants that phone call from me talking about the flood You can plan. file the permit, and then he can say I'll stop reviewing it. Mm -hmm. I think. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'll get a copy of that tomorrow at the town hall. Amen. Okay. Can you can fold it for me. Excuse me. Typically, I do two and one for us, but uh, one is enough because that's what I have, and so. I have more, but it doesn't have that. That's fine. Uh, right, so, so these, yeah. this is for us, and you're going to file one with the we file. This you're going to file that and take out as many copies as you want. Okay. Do you want to see it? Wait a second. We'll just go to the town clerk's office tomorrow. If you can make one of each, I'm going to sign one. Absolutely. I'll, I'll sign one more of these. Yeah. yeah. So you find approval, and this is a Oh, you can do them away with Charlie, I'll sign that way. Yeah. I have two originals. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's what I typically do. Thank you. Six, six. I'm going to okay? fill in it says six to zero. It's not true. No, it's not yeah. Oh. Yeah, the reason uh, so you can have that one the reason back. I didn't I didn't waste paper because oh, they're exactly fine. the same. <laughs> they're, they're duplicates, so yeah. I didn't. I gave the board the little sense of waste. That way you have two of each, all right? Yeah. Six. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do you have any uh, any questions at all tomorrow or any? Uh, yeah, he's in tomorrow. Right? We'll, we're going to be yeah. in soon. He knows my son well. So <laughs> can <actually laughs> just so can't it so, uh, the name of the gentleman in the fire department I should contact is? Uh, James Broderick. Yeah. I will give you his letter. James Broderick. Okay. Get your working drawings all done. Sure. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I can say yeah. Carl, you can have a copy of I mean, the Just run down and see. Give him a call. He's, he's very accessible. Thanks. You want three of them? Sure. I have to do this. Fire chief. I do whatever they say. <laughs> Thank you. Right on time. Yeah. Perfect. I assume you're ready. You have paperwork for it? Yes. Yes, I do. Thank you. Do you have any other references? Yeah, we'll Thanks. Okay. Have okay. copies? Is that your phone? Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, sure. Yeah, there, there is no my copy, but I'll look at it. All right, so you hope it is the same. All right, do you want to briefly, uh, you have 
Sure. Just a couple minutes here. What this is is a rally village screen for uh, posting sure for the remainder of uh, the project so that uh, some according to our um, according to our permit so they could release some um, building permits certificate of occupancy. Yes. I'm one of them. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's trying to make sure. I want to make sure I'm going she's in tomorrow. Well, that's a very active protect your interest. Larry, just a three-minute background. Yeah, that, that's basically it. Um, they came in last week to get their certificate of compliance, um, and uh, there, there is a provision in the uh, certificate of votes from the board that prior to doing that, they either have to have all the improvements completed and, and made, or they have to uh, ensure that our post surety with the town to complete the improvements. So <laughs> I went through uh, a list of things that is uh, that remains to be done, and those things are attached as uh, Exhibit A to the uh, uh, to the Form S that Steve has that he's presenting tonight. Uh, very briefly, those <laughs> improvements to be done are the. the Steve, do you have extra copies of this? Uh, yeah. Be nice we can yeah. Yeah. Take that. That's the original one. Oh, okay. Uh, very quickly, those improvements are bituminous surface course, bituminous concrete berm, bituminous concrete sidewalk, uh, completion of drainage, uh, stone pavers in the cul-de-sac, loam and seed fence landscaping, and then we added a contingency and prevailing wage rate factor of about 30 percent. Uh, so the total comes out to $112,500, <coughs> which is on the copy that I got uh, what they're uh, surety is posted for it in the form of a tripartite agreement. <coughs> North Shore Bank and um, CSD Real Estate Development, which is, is uh, yes. that's just, uh, Charles Construction uh, and the Bolton Homes. Is the landscaping that remains to be done, is, is that just around the units or is any of that within the buffer area? It's, it's in that uh, that woods to the Marysfield farm area mm -hmm. and it is the it's not the landscaping around the units themselves oh it's not it's the landscaping other than right in front of the units oh I thought that was already done no, no. some of it's done some of it's okay. done. and that's also to ensure that that multi-story understory uh, right. buffer between Maryfield and, and the site has right. a chance to grow and replacement and, and some of that had died or not you know, come up. So this will cover that as well. That figure is twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. I have an issue that has been brought to my attention. It was supposed to go before the historic commission for the fence that was placed between the driveway and the adjacent property. Um, nobody went to historic. It's a vinyl fence. Vinyl fences aren't allowed in the historic district. Now, uh, all I need is an assurance that you're going to go to the hip. We, we did go in front after it was brought up, after it was done. We did go in front of the historic. Have you got a time. certificate of appropriateness yet? No, we had a hearing that um, the homeowner next door was right there. Um, and they just heard everybody, but nothing ever came of it. There was never any uh, you have to letters file, you, you or... You have to file at that board. I happen to know because... My significant other okay. is the chair of the historic direction. Now, you've done a beautiful job out there, but that has to be resolved. Okay, so we'll have to is, is, that. is that work done? No. No, that's not too much. It remains to be done. That's, that's, yeah, that's the remains to be bond for. Well, the fence was never on our it's plan. Posted, no, it's, it's not part it of this. Right. Right. Yeah, I think that, that was mitigation really for, really the for the neighbor, right? Still under Yes. Was that to help the neighbor out because of the proximity of the project to their house yes. that they bought after? Yeah. But anything within 200 feet of, of, of uh, Main Street is in a historic district. And I think you knew it because you went before them on the temporary sign and you got approval, verbal approval of that because it was temporary. I'm pretty sure of that. So it just needs to be resolved somehow. Do you okay. plan, plan on completing the landscaping in the spring? Yeah, okay. definitely. That would be nice. Yeah. All right, so you, we have your assurance that you will revisit this with a historical. Oh, yes. Come up with it. Okay. Yeah. Are all the units complete? No. No. This how's how's your sales? Phase one's done. Um, after we get going, pretty good. Initially, not too good. 
right person trying to sell it. Was that because of the issues with the site and stuff? No, I just, we, to me, I think we picked the wrong realtor initially. <laughs> You're on TV. But <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to. Okay. Let's not digress. Right. Um, but now right. you've got and the right. The, yes. David, David, yeah. please. Uh, I just want to make sure. Uh, Larry and I have not mean this. That anybody have any trouble with the, the numbers or, or the categories? I mean, it's been researched according to the plan and what we have. In, you know. Is it enough? Well, it's thirty percent on there. Thirty percent over, so. Well, I'll, I'll just say their first estimate was fifty thousand. <laughs> After I got done with it, it's hundred and twelve thousand. That's a great question. That helped you me answer your question. Well, that's, that's, I just want to. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good indication. It's more than merry as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. <laughs> just wish them like selling the units. Oh yeah, I done. wish I wish them the best. Sure, I do. No, they have to secure it. I mean, that's uh, we learned that. Um, I need to read this. You want to take a look, please? I'm sure. sure. Um, it's going to take uh, another council on the board. No problem. Since I know this was kind of. Uh, <coughs> we put you on the agenda knowing the urgency of the issues. Thank you. I was supposed to move in fr last Friday. Yeah, and it came, <laughs> it came to me normally. Uh, and how how also many, help how many units now? And also, the office is not manned at this time. Oh, we'll I appreciate it. Cut off a few things. No, it's under agreement. Oh, thank you, Carter. Maybe one five. How many? How many you got ready? <coughs> There's we just started foundation on another building. Um, then there's three buildings up, so there's eight units up. And we just started a four unit building. How many going in there? The bank's drawing it up. It should be all right. 25 yes. units? Yes. Steve, Steve. Well, quick question on it. Yep. When do you anticipate you'll be done with the, uh, the final final building? George or Ralph, I'm sorry. Hopefully within a year. Within a year? Because I just noticed the completion date that this, uh, this is January 31st, 2015. So uh, you would think it'd be wrapped up by then? All yeah. work completed? I hope so. Okay, yeah. nice. Uh, you know, if you're still on it, I'm sure they'll... You want to change the date? I want to put more pressure on what, what date? What's the two-year Or if, if we have to renew it, whatever, okay. Okay. we'll yeah. do it. Yeah. I don't really have a problem. At least it's it's there. At least it has right. a date. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. That's what I was Which is really looking for. It's a great question. At least it has a date. Um, we just learned that, didn't we? Yeah, we just yeah. did. <laughs> That's what was going through my head. Yeah. Yeah. You only have one copy? Be good. Um, these typically are notarized, no? The bank didn't ask for it, I mean, it's up to them, I guess. Oh. What did they say? Uh, uh, it's up to the, it's up to the, the lawyers and the bank. I'm not sure it's not really good. <laughs> it's an honest answer. Huh? It's an honest answer. Oh, North Shore, said not no, sure. No, it's not. No, it's Stephen Pettigrew, sure. the vice president of the bank, has signed it, so. Yes. Um, one, two, three, four, five, five lines. Okay. Uh, I'll move that we accept the tripartite agreement. Second. Second by David Jacobith, moved by Cliff Pierce. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, who, can <coughs> who can sign on this? Uh, reg um, reg regular members. This okay. is not a special mm -hmm. permit. You're ready. No, I'm the, uh, the all in. I'm the. Uh, yeah, right. Well, no. Uh, be running in the spring. We'll see. Think about it. No, we're gonna have a vacancy, so not necessary. Un unfortunately, mm -hmm. right, Jane? Right. Right. Well, we, we may talk you out of that. You may. You got to talk. It could be our alternate. I can. Yeah, it would be the same work. As long as you're gonna <laughs> run towards filling it instead of running away. Right. Because if you're not. We need a woman's if you're not going to stay on, then we're going to talk her into it. Then we'll talk her into it. Could you sign? Oh, do I have to sign? I guess I do. Huh? Yeah, thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's enough. Enough time. All right, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's get these signatures and then we uh, we'll keep on schedule. Yeah. Uh, 
I guess, Larry, you have to hang in there, or what do you do going to come back? <laughs> no, not for that. No, okay, you know. Um, can you go out and have Debbie make some copies of these, please? Sure. She's right outside. Okay, thank you. And just make like uh, two more copies. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, the, just so the board members know, there are the. the the screening committee comprised of um, David Peterson, the chair of the personnel committee, town administrator Debbie Egan, and three planning board members, Gene Cliff and myself, uh, went through a process that started um, on November 15th. Uh, and the screening committee uh, narrowed down the applicants uh, to a number of uh, people that came in to be interviewed. And that was on the 15th and the 20, no, 22nd and the 26th. And then subsequent to that, uh, the field of applicants was narrowed down to the two applicants that we're interviewing tonight uh, based on the committee's uh, assessment of those interviews. Uh, so this is a process tonight. Uh, the goal is to, for the board to, um, the seeking comes in, she'll be helping to facilitate. Uh, and I'll, I'll, so people will be asking questions. Uh, the applicant will have a chance to uh, ask any questions to the board. We will keep it to a half an hour. And then at 9 o'clock, that's a half an hour for each applicant at 9 o'clock or uh, right before. We could try to keep it to like 25 minutes. Uh, Mm -hmm. in the interview, which I think is long enough with the questions that we have. So it's right? grueling, actually. Yeah. 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 It is in public. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and that's about the time that we kept it to. Everything is fairly, it's very consistent in the process. The process has been uh, started. This was advertised back in October. And then there's a formalized process to get to this point. All right, so you're all set? Yeah, all set. Is this the Yeah. Okay. You, no, the bank wants the original, right? I, what do they want? They want the original. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck, Thank you. 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 Far as far as, 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 as building, you have finished with the planning board. Uh, the building inspector, if there are any other issues, will take it up. Yep. And if they involve the planning board, we'll get back to me, like he did before, because he's really kind of the point man on the um, <coughs> issuing uh, certificate of occupancy. And, and I know you did all the stuff okay. out front, but he's probably okay. going to ask Highway Department to, you know, for their approval of what you did. Yeah. Because he's he's the one that brought that up. So. Okay. Yeah, the highway department. Okay. Yeah, I know that was yeah. The, the state highway department. Oh, Ken okay. Mark's probably going to ask the state yeah. if they're happy with you know what you did. Up there. I am. I tried to uh, call the state to try to get some form. It was in the uh, packet, I guess. Yeah. So you try to get them to release it or whatever, and they said, "No, you're all on file. You're all set." Yeah. Don't worry about it. We, yeah. We usually don't send a letter. Well, Ken will probably just want to call. Them. That's okay. the only thing that I think you know needs to be done. Yes, yeah, so you have to work closely with the building inspector. Who, uh, our, our permit has conditions, and that's our job is to make sure those conditions are met. I'm just curious yeah. on on the time frame that. that I hope so. Should be should be should this was a huge hurdle. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. great. Okay. 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 All right. We need to go on for entries. Thank you. Nice meeting and welcome. Nice meeting. And, and, and welcome. Well, to the well, thank you. I appreciate well, it. Have a good holiday, everyone. All right. You too. Yeah. Bye bye. All right. So the first. I don't know, Debbie, did she get packets or did she come down? No. She said she was going to have packets. Mm -hmm. well, she said that some things this, uh, this afternoon. Yeah, but then she also has stuff. Okay, Debbie? All right, so does any other, I just want to the board, any other questions as to the process? Just briefly. And what our goal is tonight is actually to discuss it afterwards again in an open yeah, How many did you uh, interview in person? How many did you interview in person? Six or seven? Six or seven? Yeah. 
narrowing down from a field of uh, about 15. Uh -huh. Yeah, we had about um, four. No, but in total. Five. Four, five. Um, and we actually interviewed. Because some didn't come in. You know. Well, we had a lot of more applicants, but we we, did, yeah. the screening committee had the screening. narrowed that down. Like and then there were yeah, some changes. We, we were trying to get and more. Two of through. them had backed up. We were up trying to get we, six or seven. I think we ended up with five. Or seven. Uh -huh. Yes. Because uh, they had with and then we also uh, like pretty qualified. we would have had three finals and uh, one, one withdrew at the last minute that was invited tonight. Oh really? Yes. Yeah. yes. Got you. So who are we going to see today? Kirk and uh, uh, okay. Heidi. Yeah. yeah. So we have yeah. Kirk on at eight. Um, each, okay. each member okay. has a set of uh, questions um, in a package for each applicant in case you want to write down answers to reflect upon later this evening. Um, so the identical <coughs> questions for each applicant. And I'm going to spread the qu questions around. Uh, I'll start with a couple. Like we did the last time, I was just explaining it to Steve. Right. And you just let me know when you're ready, Mr. Chairman. But, but I, I will keep it. We really have to keep, keep it, it to the time frame. Okay, so uh, you're about five minutes behind right now. Okay. So bring them in. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, don't bring them in yet. Sorry, I don't okay. want other things to say before, okay. just so they know. Because you haven't, you just got this in front of you. The extensive um, references were checked on both candidates are in front of us tonight, and just for the, uh, as a summary, uh, the references was, were exemplary. Mm -hmm. uh, both. So, um, just so you know, that should not weigh in on. You. So you know, you know, start, you know, if you ask that question afterwards, which you can, we have to stick we, with these questions when we discuss it. We are, we are consistently. We do. Each person's gonna. Get the same well, if there's something that pops in your head, oh, yeah, you sure. have to ask. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as long as it doesn't, yeah. Okay, just so you know, the references have been done and there were no issues in those. So they were. Okay. Good evening. This is Kirk Baker. This is the planning board. Hi, um, Kirk. Hey, Kirk. Mr. Chairman, you'll do the introductions. <coughs> Good to see you again. Hey, good to see you again. Good to see you. Cliff Pierce, we met the other yeah. day. Yeah. Gene Cotello and Matt. Okay, and uh, Larry Graham. Larry Graham is our reviewing engineer. Yeah. Good to see you. Steve Cassiotis. Good to see you. Jake was. Good to see you. Uh, Steve and David are actually full-time members of the comprising a five-member board. Okay. And so we also have an associate uh, member. Okay. Uh, Chris Thornton. Okay. So. Okay. Paul Chayra. Uh, but he was obviously, will be uh, Participating in the interview process. How was the traffic tonight? Actually, not too bad. I mean, yeah. It's already it, soon to be on uh, 128. It's kind of slow, but yeah. it opens up. <laughs> so, uh, you, you, this is your first time with this road here, so we are we are going to move it along. Okay. You don't have to feel like you're unless unless you're stumped or you have you know. okay. There are some, and, and Debbie will be signaling me as well. So. Okay. So I'm, again, I'm going to start with the first two questions. I'm going to just go actually this way because these guys have a chance. Yeah, we are already interrogated. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, at the end of the last couple of minutes, if you have any questions for the board. Okay. Uh, Kirk, why are you interested in the position of Raleigh Town Planner? Well, uh, my background has been in uh, planning. I have 12, 12 years of experience in planning. As an urban planner, I have like a wide array of experience, and not just in um, urban planning, uh, but also in environmental uh, planning as well. Um, but I, um, um, I moved here with my wife um, for a job that she had uh, about two years ago, and um, so before that, I was in, I had you know had gained 12 years of experience uh, with the uh, cities of um, Suffolk, Virginia. Um, for about eight years, and before that, I was with uh, a small town outside of uh, Winston Salem in North Carolina, called Kernersville. And um, between, um, you know, throughout that time, I learned how to use GIS, Geographic Information Systems. Uh, I learned about historic preservation. Uh, I learned about. Um, we had a, in Virginia. We had a a. Um, the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Act, which is what led me into the environmental aspect. We had managed through that. Um, and um, I also did site plan review. 
um, for uh, like large commercial and residential subdivisions. And um, I have experience in doing plat review uh, for subdivisions. And locally, I've worked with Beverly and uh, yes, yes. doing some uh, yeah. also some in, uh, helping Winchester on this. Yeah, I, I did some. So there's too. some local. Mm -hmm. It's just not all out of state. Yeah. Um, you've already. Uh, I don't need to ask the second question because you've already answered it. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, if you want to briefly. What would you consider your uh, your greatest strength uh, in, in this position? Well, I feel that uh, my analytical skills are probably one of my greatest strengths as a planner um, in terms of uh, analyzing land use compatibility. Um, and when, for, for example, taking an application uh, or a site plan or something, um, trying to understand the different variables that are work that inter that interweave together, mm -hmm. and um, like you know the environmental aspect of the. Uh, the, the, the layout aspect, the traffic, and all those different areas, <coughs> and learning to like separate them and analyze them, and to actually um, to to review them in, in terms of compliance with existing code. Is there any uh, skills that you think you need to, to sharpen to take this position, or? Well, I think that one of the things that you guys had, uh, expressed interest in was uh, in terms of um, the uh, writing. Um, like or developing and amending code and writing uh, mm -hmm. regulations, and I I I have like only so much, uh, or I actually only have indirect. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have actual direct experience in that myself. I've watched it in Massachusetts. Yeah, 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 in Massachusetts, and um, but I haven't actually directly been involved in that. So that's something mm -hmm. I would need to learn. Like, mm -hmm. and um, but you know, I have been. I, like I said, I've, I've had experience with different codes, like from North Carolina, Virginia, and then coming to to um, Massachusetts and learning, you know, the Massachusetts diff, uh, codes. Um, so I have experience between, like, in a lot of different places. Uh, which which segues to the next question. <laughs> All right, those are kind of yes and no. <laughs> sure, I mean, and, and, and you, you have already answered though. You've worked in uh, various uh, town settings. I noticed that you mentioned ur urban planning. This is pretty. This is small town planning, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, does that, uh, uh, you know, were you hoping to uh, land in a bigger city, or is is, is, no. is working in a small community like Raleigh something that would also uh, meet your, you know, uh, your own career goals? Actually, I feel like that my specialty has been small town mm -hmm. planning. The uh, first job that I had uh, was with Kernersville, North Carolina. How, how many, what's the population of that, just as a comparison? I mean, it's probably about, like, uh, I would think about 5,000. It's probably comparable to, to, to here. Um, I mean, Suffolk, Virginia was like probably 60,000, but it, it actually, for that area, was a small town. The reason it had like a large population, it was also a large land area, but it mm -hmm. was it was because the city merged with the county. county gotcha. So it was essentially a small town on the outside of of the Hampton Roads area. So mm -hmm. my my experience is in small town planning, and I feel like that's become my specialty. Sure. And uh, are you familiar with the uh, the open meetings law in Massachusetts? Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and all the state ethics laws. Uh, yeah, and conflict of interest. And, yeah. Okay, and and you, have you taken the conflict of interest uh, courses? And, and I we w when I was over in Beverly, we did like a, a review of course, it. Yeah. Well, not no, I, uh, I didn't do it on. I didn't haven't done any course. You call it a course. Yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't done any coursework on okay. it, but I do it. Like been in a meeting uh, in which it was covered. Gosh, the law was covered. But you realize you would have to do that. Yeah, I can. It's not a ban. The state makes it uh, fairly easy. They just okay. allow you to take it online. Oh, okay. Okay. And is there anything in your uh, schedule that would permit, uh, cause any uh, conflict with uh, twice monthly meetings on Wednesdays? Oh, no. Okay. That would be perfect. Uh, David, can you, since you've been here a while, I'm, I'm just going to skip to David only, Steve, when I come back to you, because David's been longer on the board, understands the way that's set up. Six, David? Uh, the town planner will be the department of one, mm -hmm. although you share space with current government and health, mm -hmm. uh, meaning there will be no clerical ex uh, assistance provided by the town planner, uh, to the town planner, no day-to-day -day supervisor, mm -hmm. 
Did you get a supervise yourself? The town planner will be a department head and report to a five member elected planning board, which is us. The town planner will need to be a self starter and be able to work independently on his own or with the assistance of the board on occasions. Have you ever worked in this type of independent setting before? Well, I've not been the sole town planner before, but I do work well on, on my own and under my own initiative. Um, we'll try it here. <laughs> I, would, right. I consider myself a very disciplined person. And Where I are you coming from on a day-to-day -day basis to come to work? Oh, uh, Winchester. Okay. That's um, but the, um, I guess I would just point out that I, 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 I do work you know, well on my own I, in terms of being disciplined and being able to set a schedule and to have goals and um, to be able to reach those goals. Part yeah. of that kind of seven kind of segues in. Yeah, seven goals. Take seven too. Yeah. The town planner will be responsible for taking uh, planning board meeting minutes mm -hmm. and writing letters and uh, doing the minutes of a meeting. Mm -hmm. Lovely memos. Yeah. <laughs> memos on behalf of the planning board. <coughs> Have you ever taken minutes for a board? Yes. Or? yes. Okay. Lots of minutes. I, I've done that three times. I'm used to the uh, letter um, and doing the letters and the, you know, the technical aspects of, of running a meeting and getting a meeting ready and mm -hmm. advertising and uh, doing the, uh, you know, adjacent property owner notifications, things like that. That's good because there's a lot of that. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <coughs> right, Steve. Number I've eight. Got no questions. Number eight, please. You want to do eight? <coughs> eight, eight, uh, eight part time eight, budget nine. for 22 hours, which is offer benefits such as health insurance, paid leave benefits. Is it your intent to work solely at this position, or will you seek another part time position to supplement your income? Well, I mean, in terms of uh, right now, I'm actually working part time job in the mornings, um, so I would. Can you answer what that is? It's uh, with Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. uh, um, the, the booksellers. Um, but um, is it would <coughs> just it would depend on like how I mean I know we discussed this before about the flexibility of the scheduling. Um, I can be flexible and you know whatever I need to do. You know, um, well, one of the things I've been looking at is to is to basically uh, you know operate more like a consultant in, in a sense. So these part time positions are kind of like that. I mean, if 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 I if I left the Barnes and Noble's position, but then and this was my only position. I mean, I'm not. I mean, you know, my wife is the main the main source of income right now, and um, I'm. I'm happy to focus on 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 one on one position, but I mean, I you know, it would be possible that I would consider maybe taking on one other consulting, uh, you know, consulting. It, it looks uh -huh. like you work for the city of Suffolk and the city of uh, Kernsville simultaneously. Is that right? So you've. You, you, I'm sorry. It, it, it looks like your you, your jobs overlap uh, in, in Suffolk, Virginia, and Kernsville, North Carolina. No, no. They, um, that must have been it's a typo. Okay, it must, must be. be a typo. This is November 2004 to 2011 in Suffolk and 99 to 2013 in Kernsville. So that's just a typo. Or something. oh no, it yeah. was 2003 and in, in uh, that must be yeah. Okay, it, I just re probably refer you to my um, resume. resume. Okay, yeah. yeah, 2003 was when I left Suffolk. And oh, we kind of did the same thing. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Number nine. I want to just be consistent. Sure. And we can we can freelance if we have time to do. Sorry. Well, I guess it's our goal to have a position to, uh, by the end of December. If you were offered the position, will you be able to start working and be here for the 22 hours? And uh, I mean, I, I think it's, there's quite a bit of work in that 22 hours, isn't there? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, you may be saying there, there may be this much work to do for the, for the next meeting. You have to have all this ready for all of us. Yeah. You got yeah. a problem with that? Well, you're saying, uh, what did you say the date range was? Uh, Start for the end of December. Oh yeah, yeah, that would be yeah. I think you also realize this flexibility. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, it's it's not like yeah, boot camp. You know, oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to be like you know, I would want to be fair to my current employer. You know, I wouldn't want to just quit on them, but I right. like. Well, you may not have to. You may have 
Yeah, yeah, and then that we. I, I don't, don't think you'll have to. Oh, you won't. Yeah. Have, have you, you mentioned to, to them that you've been? Um, oh, they know what my when I when I started working there, I told them that you know that my hours were limited to a certain certain time for mainly. A number of but did you tell them you were looking for other? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That my intent was to do the type type work. No. Oh. Yeah. You haven't moved much. You just moved from. I, we've been in Winchester for for. Um, Two years since your wife came. Yeah, since my wife came. Are you committed to staying in Massachusetts? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, we want to stay. My wife's originally from here. You said she's a reporter, right? Yeah. The newspaper. Yeah, yeah, she's a reporter. So, I mean, she's found where she, she, the job that she wants to be at, and you know, um, I, I, I like it here. I mean, she's from here, and we've you know done several moves in order to probably get here. And so, you know, we've been here two years and we like it, so. All right, Jean, number 10. As a town planner, would it be, would, Thanks, would it be your responsibility to act as an advocate for change and lead the planning board, or would your role be to implement the policy decisions set by the board? Well, I feel like it, there's a little bit of both would be involved in a sense to advocate for uh, good planning policy. I mean, as a, as a planner, I mean, you know, with a certain technical expertise, I guess, and opinions about, you know, to, I mean, perhaps to persuade, <laughs> you know, the board if, if I feel like it's necessary to persuade and to make my case to what I think would be appropriate. But I do feel that, you know, you know I'm being hired to also, you know, perform the will of the, you know, of the, of the appointed board or the, the elected boards and and the will of the people. I mean, so, I mean, I'm not, you know, here to force or to try to get in the way, um, but I need to express an opinion if, if, if necessary. That'd be great. Anybody else want to expand upon that? I mean, <coughs> the independence, but, you know. Because, as you know, in every town it's politics, and you learn it quickly. Yeah. Well, I think once you're in, you understand some of the issues of the town, then you're better off able to assist the planning board. In right. It's a dynamic, and, and there's a certain amount of, uh, you know, it's, it's a dynamic board. It's, it's changes happen, you know, changes they, happen. I think that at least some warning should be here because of the interaction with the Building inspector mm. on certain issues. Oh, this regular, yeah, regular ops hours right. are very important. Yeah, right. yeah, I was thinking yeah. that's sort of my question to you was going to be: Is it like four hours a day, or can it do two eight-hour days? How how does that work? Is it some time? of that's flexible, isn't it? Well, typically, uh, I know Katrina would try to have the planning board manned at regular hours for public access, right. at least you know three times a week. At least I would yeah. think, yeah. Because yeah. everybody can't just go on one day. You know? mm-hmm. So that's why Katrina, but she was available on another day by appointment, someone called. She, well, the, you know, but she, it, it's to take that 22 hours and split it amongst the meetings, uh, public access hours, and also hours when you can just work on your own to get all that clerical stuff done. You know, mm-hmm. so. yeah. Is there a requirement in how much time it has to be in the office for the public? No. What question are we on? I think the board the board can discuss that also. Eleven, sorry, eleven, Jean. Oh, eleven. Okay. Um, I think uh, sorry, the the ra- yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> the, the Raleigh Planning Board is busy. It's a busy town board. We have numerous filings for special permits, site plans, and subdivisions. Please describe your experience working on these types of filings. Um, I have experience with all, all of uh, the, the special permits. I think um, are the um, um, when I was in Southern, we, we call them special permits in, in um, Kernersville. When I went to uh, Southern, we called them conditional use permits. So I worked on a lot of those. Um, um, and um, site plans, I reviewed um, many, many site plans, both residential and commercial and industrial uh, site plans. Um, so in terms of like technical ability on those lines, are, are pretty solid. I put 13. Uh, 
Yeah, um, and this may vary from state to state, but um, can you uh, describe the differences between special permits and site plan review? Well, special permits are, with my understanding, uh, that certain land uses um, require special approval by uh, a, a special permitting agent, which can either be the planning board or, in some cases, I guess, selectmen or city council or a combination of the both. Yeah, or, with the, both. or the Zoning Board of Appeals. Or the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, uh, where, you know, maybe one of them, like the Planning Board might make, or in some cases, well, the Planning Board would make a recommendation. When I was in Southwark, the Planning Board uh, made the recommendations to the City Council. And in Beverly, the, the Planning Board was the, you know, the, uh, uh, in many cases, was the de decision maker. Um, so it just kind of depends, but I've had experience, um, you know, but yeah, with a special, with the spe that's with a special permit, and, um, and I guess with the site plans, uh, site plans are really just for, you know, like a development application to develop a particular site, and it can be, I understand they can be administrative, uh, in some jurisdictions, but I think a lot of Ma Massachusetts jurisdictions, the site plan is, is usually reviewed by the planning boards, mainly because the planning board has the technical expertise uh, in terms of um, land use to be able to analyze <coughs> and to make comments and make decisions in regards to site planning. But they are two different things. A special use permit deals with the use um, and um, the allowing the user making a recommendation about in, in, in regards to a use, whereas the site plan is a, is a document uh, for approving a particular type of layout and design. Yep, okay. Um, uh, number 14, uh, and I don't know how familiar you are with the intricacies of our state's zoning uh, law, but uh, many people consider it to be uh, quirky, confusing, and not, not conducive to good advanced <laughs> planning. Look at the are going through. <laughs> I want you to assume that you have the ability to unilaterally change it in some way. Can you think of anything that you would do to change it? Well, I think, you know, one of the things I noticed since I've, I've been here was the approval not required process, um, whereas I, I, I kind of, I, I kind of thought that that leaves the uh, jurisdictions open to creating lots or allowing lots to be altered or modified or created and actually not be buildable. Um, whereas in when I was in Virginia, that there was a we, we did minor subdivisions. We had a minor subdivision review process, uh, which I you know thinking on it, um, it, it, and it depends on the jurisdiction. Some minor subdivision. Uh, reviews would be actually have to be approved by the planning board and in our case in Virginia it was administrative and the planning director actually reviewed minor subdivisions and signed off on those. Mm -hmm. um, but you know I, I kind of find that kind of review having it like on a plat and and it has to have certain notations and be um, have a, a, a surveyor seal uh, on it uh, to be a, a, a safer, because you're actually certifying, you sign off on it, and when you do the subdivision, you're certifying that the lot is is buildable. So uh, my understanding is I, I think here one of the, the issues might be with like in a town like Raleigh, where you have, your, all the lots are on septic, um, that you might run in, that using the A&R process, you could actually, and that's probably, from what I understand, I, I was talking to Debbie that that there is a process in place about uh, that prevents um, that you would have to get a PERT test in order to to create a lot, but that would actually be part of a minor subdivision process. Mm -hmm. So that would be one thing I would think would be um, uh, the uh, altering, modifying the ANR. Yeah, that's one thing I would change too. Yeah. Um, the next question, when we move on? Yep. After assuming the professional planner position, um, what would be your priorities uh, beyond meeting statutory requirements and doing the administrative work, etc.? Well, I, I would like to get a feel for, uh, I guess, what the, in a way, what the, the goals of the town um, of, of Rally, what overall, like, because I know it probably involves a lot of um, 
in, in terms of um, like what, what are the goals in terms of environmental and historic preservation and um, site development and all, all of that to get a, a good idea, um, a grasp of what the overall goals are, which I, I, I understand are in your master plan, which actually I made a copy of before I, I didn't know if like, we were going to cover any of that. <laughs> <laughs> which kind of blends into 16, so you might as well go to 16. Um, yeah, the, uh, are there any collaborative projects with either town committees, local nonprofits, state or federal governments that uh, you think that the planning board should work to accomplish? Well, um, I might add a little piece to that, maybe. And, <coughs> and also mention whether you've written any grants or anything. I, and actually, that's that's probably one we'll of the. Get to the first part of the question, then Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, the. Um, yeah. it, collaborative yeah, projects. Yeah, yeah so. collaborative projects. Um, uh, I would have to give it some thought. I mean, I have to admit, you uh, like um, in terms of. Um, I mean, do you mean like between like um, the, the planning department and right. conservation, or I, yeah, historic. historic uh, or or I mean, it could be anything really. Affordable yeah. housing. Would that yeah. be I, I actually affordable yeah, housing would be with a great the community thing. preservation committee, right. CP, yes, CPA, CPA, yeah. CPA, the CPA, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah save. So there's yeah. also recreational committees in town, mm -hmm. um, historical, uh, outside groups. There's a bunch of, you know, Essex Greenbelt, Audubon, mm -hmm. the federal. I mean, there's a lot of federal, there's a lot of protected land around here that's only exists because of collaboration. Yeah. I have to admit, I, would, I, I need you have to, to learn that. And so some of it, not exactly, I guess, some, the dynamics. Some of it because it's very wet. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a whole lot of options. Yeah. Uh, I guess about the, uh, also to point out, I guess what you were saying about the grant writing, that is another, probably another area that I would need some work on. I mean, I've, I, when I was in Beverly, I had started like um, assisting in um, a, another gentleman in, in developing um, a grant proposal. And uh, but it never really went anywhere. I did the I did the, um, the uh, I, I did a document for it, but I didn't actually ever. It never came to fruition. So but you feel as though your writing skills are strong enough to my, take some I, of this. I in, feel my writing skills are very strong um, in terms of the, um, you know, of actually having under my belt and my, on my resume grant <coughs> writing. You know, I can't say that I do. Okay. You know, so just be honest. Be <laughs> it's like one of those things. It, it's something I should learn, and and I would be very open. I just it hasn't been part of my experience. Oh, thank you. Open to it. Thanks. Uh, Seventeen. Rowley needs to expand its commercial tax base, while at the same time, uh, through effective planning and zoning, uh, retain the small town and scenic characteristics that we, we like so much. Um, and what role uh, should the planning board play in achieving that, that balance? It really comes down to, I think, exercising the, the correct land use control. So we have to look at the uh, master plan and the, bio, and the zoning bylaws and make sure that they are achieving the goals um, that, that you're trying to achieve in terms of like you know, fostering you know, healthy development and economic development, but also be at the same time <clears throat> protecting those historic assets and the environmental assets uh, as well. So, uh, so it really, you know, would be something probably one of the projects we probably should get into is to like take a look and at the, um, the I guess the the permitting history and to see to make sure that you know that it's on tra track with the goals that you set out set forth and in the master plan and that we are actually achieving mm -hmm. you know, development with protection of those assets. Do you see some, any similarities between Winchester and Raleigh? Oh yeah, I mean I think Winchester has, it's it's a small town, um, even though it's in a uh, suburban area, but it's still <coughs> got a very small town feel to it. I mean if you, um, if you were to go to the downtown, it, it definitely carries that more than it would be as you know more than it would be as a you know a suburb. I think um, 
So, yeah, I mean, there are definitely similarities. I mean, uh, what they are trying to achieve downtown is, is, is really the same thing, to, like, make it look small and, um, or not to make it look small, but to make it look historic and to, to you know, keep us that historic character and aesthetic um, alive despite any, you know, changes in the economy. Um, the last question, which is depicted here as a bonus question, huh? <laughs> because you can actually, it can be a very brief answer. Uh, you may or may not have t much time up to this point to learn about Raleigh as a town, uh, but in terms of development, can you tell us what the town, in your opinion, is doing right and what we're doing wrong? Well, it looks like that in terms of preservation. Did you arrive during the night, night or day? <laughs> yeah, I, I have to. I have to say, in terms of actually being there, well, the both times I've been here, I've actually been at night. But I, um, I have um, seen it from the map, the the mapping. So I have a good idea. I mean, I know that you know that you you're bounded by the I ninety five on the west. Uh, that that one thirty three cuts cut straight through on the east you're bound you have the Atlantic Ocean and a huge wetland area um, that um, you know that, that that makes up that in like a it looks like a quarter of the area of the city. Marsh. <coughs> yeah, marsh. <laughs> and um, and uh, you have like the um, the one A and the one um, uh, highway one corridors but but just in your know, after you know Learning a little bit about the layout. What, it, what, in your opinion, do you think? Well, I guess what it, I would point out is that it looks to me that that you guys are doing an excellent job at preserving the agri like the agricultural aspect and the conservation aspect, the open space, which is a key, you know, it's a, it's a key aspect. I think of. Um, I think that's what you were calling for in the uh, in your master plan. Was to protect those the the agriculture and the the conservation the open space assets as well. So and to me it just uh, from what I've driven around and seen it I mean there's a lot of his history that's 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 here in terms of the architecture including this building. Uh, it seems that it seems that that's been preserved. <laughs> It seems that that's been preserved, so that's... It was 14 out, you understand. Know, <laughs> <laughs> this leads into one quick question. I yeah. see down in Beverly working for Tina, mm -hmm. who I know quite well, that you're working with the Historic Commission. Mm -hmm. what, what does that work involve? The, the Historic Commission? Are you the coordinator for the Historic Commission? Yeah, I did the coordination for the Historic the Commission. Monthly meetings, etc. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. set up the meetings, the... Um, now, it, for the historic, in that case, I didn't do minutes for that. We actually had a minutes taker, but in terms of setting up the legal ads and 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 um, all that, I took care of all that. You have any questions for the board? And then I'm uh, going to give the board one more crack because oh. we, we need to wrap up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was at, uh, probably in terms of what in in terms of projects, like maybe you guys could tell me like um, what what's the I guess the diversion or dispersion of, of projects in terms of, you have like a lot of site plans, special permits, and... In other words, what are we doing right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're working. Why are we here? Not right, just right now, potentially. <laughs> Actually, I mean, the town goes through what? Spurts? Yeah, like everywhere. But, you know, we've had a full range of residential versus commercial uh, projects over the years. Uh, mm -hmm. We've gone through very rapid uh, growth with respect to commercial as well as residential. Um, uh, most of the commercial is mostly on the Route 1 corridor, and that's pretty much uh, used up now, but you know, there's still some opportunities for that. There's, uh, there's still a lot of land that's not protected in Raleigh that uh, would be, could be subject to uh, residential development, and that's the big uh, uh, task in front of the planning board is to try to see that that, that, that land is developed in the right way. Okay. You know? Explain to him the one tool that we do have on that that is being used, space, the open resource, space. Resource development. Um, yeah, that, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with open space residential developments, if they have yeah, those in Virginia, maybe they call them something, planned unit developments or yeah, something. We call them, I think, cluster subdivisions. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, I've reviewed those as it well. It is an offshoot. It's kind of like, yeah, I mean, 
but our, our, we have bylaws that allow that type of development, trying to promote a conservation as much as yeah. possible and, and the preservation of natural features. Uh, and this board has, in the, you know, in recent years, has been very in, much in favor of those types of developments that we've approved uh, three or four um, in recent years. So. And we have two, two that are under construction. Right. And, uh, and also try to retain, a, try to restore and retain a, an actual town center. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a small town, but we, we have been involved in some interesting projects. Uh, one in the uh, in our so-called town center, which at one point was pretty run down. Mm -hmm. But uh, under our uh, what we call our New England Village Development Bylaw, uh, mm -hmm. it really has been rehabilitated. I think. Mm -hmm. and it, I think it's, 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 it's a place that people now like to go and buy a cup of coffee. And yeah, it was just over. a pass through before. Mm -hmm. and, and mainly, mainly. Mm -hmm. And through our OSRD process, we have preserved a lot of open space. And we recently, recently uh, 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 approved a country club OSRD, so that will. Um, all the, the fairways and the greens will be uh, preserved as open space, and there's a development off to the sides. Yeah. So, you know, we do some interesting. But uh, before us at this time, uh, there are several large projects that are uh, being built that are ongoing. <coughs> and these are, like Cliff was saying, these are clustered mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with a fair amount of open space involved. Um, no, but in the 30, a lot 20, of open 25, space. yeah. And restricted. Some of it is actually uh, has restrictions and covenants for per for perpetuity. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And then the the Girl Scout Girl Scout camp is going to present some uh, right. interesting options and opportunities. It's a large it? large park. Is it two hundred and thirty acres? Over two hundred, I guess. Yeah. 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 Oh. And, and, and in, in Massachusetts, if uh, you know, have a, usually you have a, a a time frame whereby the town gets uh, first crack. Mm -hmm. uh, either buying it or doing something with it collaboratively with some other groups. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, which is lucky because it can't just be, you know, someone with a lot of dough. Right. Yeah. Snap yeah. it up right, right, right away. Put a casino on it. Especially. <laughs> <laughs> anyone so I, else? Anyone I, else before? We I, I think that while this is a small town, there are a lot of interesting cutting edge projects that we do from time to time. That's yeah, my opinion. Anyway. Then we, we have it. We never know what's coming. Right. No, and there's also a lot of day to day, like uh, regulation of cell towers, no, si yeah. signs. Yeah. yeah. You know, we think it's mundane, but when it, you take it in its uh, so entirety, yeah. it, uh, it affects the character of the town. If you yeah, don't, if you don't pay attention, to it, yeah. if you just in, in, ignored, you know, 50 signs, uh, yeah. <laughs> we you tried it, but there's only so much. We're not an enforcement board; we're a permitting board. Most, most of your college experience is not planning. It's geography. I started uh, my, my degree, well, yeah, my, my master's was in, in geography, and that's where I got into GIS, ge Geographic Information Systems. And um, that's what kind of led to my first job out of school was uh, with Kernersville. Most of your jobs have been planning. Yeah, because the, the GIS, I got the job in Kernersville because it was a GIS planner position. Okay. So I did mapping and then also, and it was a small town so I did a lot of different things and um, um, and worked in tandem with the director of, the, of that town to um, like uh, on not just mapping but also like, um, like comprehensive plan um, an analysis and then modifying the comprehensive plan and then um, and also casework in terms of applications that went before planning board. I made presented applications to the planning board and all that. So. All right, thank you. All right, we're out of time. Oh. Kirk, thank you for your time. Yes. Thank, thank you very much, Kirk. Good, good to see you again. Good seeing everyone. Nice again. to see you again. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. Nice to meet you again. Nice to see you again. Nice to meet you, Kirk. Nice to meet you, Kirk. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <coughs> the intent is to have all of this happen very quickly, which we already said to you last time. Okay. Okay. Well, it's great. Great meeting everyone. It's nice meeting you. Have a good night. Thanks Thank for coming you. in at night. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Heidi. Um, the same format. Is that okay? Yep. Just move it along. Yep. And, and if you switch your uh, Debbie, that's nice. I mean, a lot of information here. You know. Yes. The references are here. Mm -hmm. The cover letters here. Yeah. Um, her application is here, and her resume is here. Um, <coughs> and so
So, uh, Heidi Murphy, as you can see, uh, it's kind of as a different uh, in terms of you know having many many years in in a, a town. So I can, uh, close it, close it up. <laughs> so, first time this is an interesting contract. Mm -hmm. Hi, Hi, Chris Thornton. Hi, nice to meet you. 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 Nice to and already gone through it with uh, the screening committee. Yes. Um, keep it 25 minutes. Um, and it's a full board now. So, okay. And uh, Chris also, it's a full board. And okay. board. Chris is uh, associate manager for the, yeah. that format, which is always great to have. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'm going to start and then it goes around. And then at the end, obviously, you'll have a chance to take a shot at us. <laughs> okay. Um, why are you interested in uh, some of these we've already had, but we're on TV. Mm -hmm. Why are you interested in the position of Raleigh Town Planner? Um, I'm interested for two reasons. Um, primarily, prior to applying, I had actually researched um, many of your bylaws and regulations. And what struck me as interesting is all the proactive work that the town has already done in terms of um, long range planning and bylaws and regulations. You have the right to farm bylaw, you have a demolition delay bylaw. Uh, you have the New England Village District bylaw, which a lot of communities don't actually have design guidelines per se for their community. You adopted the Community Preservation Act, I think, in 2001. You were one of the first communities in the Commonwealth, or if not the first, to, to do so. And um, because of that, you get the full 52% match. So you've done a lot of work in the area of um, historic well, projects. <laughs> yeah, so, well, you know, the Commonwealth kind of knocked away at our percentages. And um, you've also purchased a lot of open space and done a lot of historic projects. So for all those reasons, and in addition to that, because it's part-time, and um, I would actually like to have more time to be at home with my children and have a job that allows me to pick them up after school. Uh, those are all the reasons why I'm interested. Thank you. And um, you obviously, you might want to give the so we can move along. Also, you can sure. keep a succinct uh, your background and experience and um, any areas of planning that you think uh, emphasize those planning your career. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, I've been working in planning since I was about the age of 22. I started working for the town of Reading as a planning assistant. Well, you have to tell us how many years. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> you gave um, it away. I mean, I guess like I just I sort of I sort of learned from the ground up. I started right out of college as like the planning assistant slash secretary. Um, moved up to be the planning director on the town of Pelham. Issued building permits, COs, reviewed site plans, subdivisions, Which is et cetera. New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, yes, correct. Worked for then the town of North Andover for approximately seven years. Um, I was initially the town planner, so I was responsible for writing bylaws, things stuff, site plan review, subdivision regulations, A&R. Um, was promoted internally approximately two to three years after that as community development director, which at that point that position was primarily managerial and grant writing. Um, I stayed, like I said, I worked there for seven years, and then I was in the town of Reading for another seven, and at that position I sort of did a conglomeration of both. What would you consider your strengths uh, in the job as a planner? Kind of alluded to that. Um, I would say my two biggest strengths are my knowledge of rules and regulations, state laws, rules and regulations, as well as the communities, and writing reviews for the planning board, um, and then also grant writing. Okay. I think I've received approximately seven million dollars in grants. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, is there anything you think you need to get up to speed with before you took the position, or are you? Well. Personally, I, yeah, I would actually want to rely on the knowledge sort of of the planning board at first to get started because I can read all the rules and regulations I want, but you actually know the town. 
Mm-hmm. So like if we were to work on the bylaw, like the proposed bylaw for the marijuana, I'm not going to attempt to go look at parcels because there could be a history of certain parcels of land that you have that I don't have because you've been here longer than me. I'm, I'm new. Mm-hmm. So yes, I think I would want the background of the, of the history of different parcels of land. All right. And uh, so this next question, I think you've already pretty well answered. You've worked in uh, government settings before. Yes. Uh, you're familiar with all the state ethics laws and, and uh, the open meeting tests. laws. And, yep. uh, you mentioned you have, uh, and you know, we all, think, I'm sure, have family. Uh, is, any restrict limitations on your ability to be here twice uh, a month for a Wednesday evening meeting? None at all. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to just keep moving to the next one just to get it off the list. Uh, every other city you've been to has a bigger planning department, it seems as though. Yes. Uh, in this instance, it's a department of one person. Yes. Does that uh, offer any unique challenges to you? Do you think you're able to manage yourself uh, on a daily mm-hmm. basis to, yeah? No, it doesn't offer any challenges. If I, if I, the reason why it doesn't is if I hadn't learned from the ground up, I would say it would offer me challenges, but my first five years, working and planning was being an, a secretary, a planning mm-hmm. secretary. So um, I pretty much know all the facets of planning from the ground up to the advanced work. So I don't, I don't and I, I type fast, mm-hmm. so I type about 90 words per minute. Um, so I don't feel like that would be problematic for me. And uh, I'll just follow up. Uh, where you'd be the department head and also the administrative assistant, uh, yes. do, you, do you think that would, would those administrative uh, duties uh, bother, me? bother you? Nope, I have no problem taking minutes. I, I actually, uh, in my last position, I usually, like if I write a memo for um, the planning board, I would fax it to like the planning board engineer as well as the developer as well as their attorney so that they and had the, all that chair, information. And the, and the entire planning board. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, just so that you had every, any packets that, so that they would have my comments ahead of time so they didn't walk into a meeting blindsided. So I'm used to, I'm used to interacting with the developers and the public, whether it's fax, email, in person. That's yeah. all part of my job. Yeah, I noticed that that, I mean, that was a strength to be prepared for the meeting. Yes. Um, David? Um, I'm going to I'm going to skip number seven because it says you can skip you have yeah. problems Is this bad that I'm getting questions? No, yes. No, uh, <laughs> it says can no, you take the overlap minutes, right for, but the, I know you can take minutes. Um, but this position is part time and budgeted for 22 hours per week. The yes. Position does offer benefits such as health insurance, paid benefits. Is your intent to work solely at this position, or will you seek another part-time position to supplement your income? My intent is to work solely at this position. I have no interest in working um, two part-time positions at all. I'll get the next one. Our goal is to have someone in this position at the end of December. Is there any problem with that if you're offered the position? No, sir. We covered that at the interview when I said I would be available to start. But some of us weren't there. Yes, I know. I apologize. Apologies. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Did it seem like he was there or something? <laughs> I he could have walked, been walking through. Uh, he's in town hall. Want me to hit the next one? Uh, sure. No, okay. then I'll as town planner, you would be, it would be your responsibility to act as an advocate for change and lead the planning board, or would it be the role to be an implement policy decisions set by the board? Oh, that's rough because, in all honesty, I think it's no I think it's a portion. I think there's actually a portion of both. To be fair, to, to, and I'm not trying to get out of the question, but I think I am supposed to bring new ideas to the planning board or new laws as they come about. Like, let's just say the law that was just passed about CPA. It was just in the Tribune. So now, like, you can use um, some funds to actually, if you have like an athletic field, you can use it to rebuild them. Which, I, you know, to me, that's something I should be passing mm. on to. I think when I go to conferences or read stuff on mass planners, I think that that's information you should be aware of so that you can go ahead and instruct me whether or not that's something we should be pursuing. And then um, as a policy setter, well, I think you're ultimately, I think I'm the conduit. I mean, I'm the person who recommends, I'm an advisory position. I recommend to you, and the ultimate decision is, whether or not you want to actually go forward with it. So 
I, th I don't know if I completely answered the question, but I think it's a combination of both. Yeah, I mean, I think we, are, well, I think we mentioned that one of the goals we had was to revisit our, what are they, seven or eight year old last revision of the rules and regulations, or maybe longer. Oh, longer than that. Yeah. Was it 2000? Right, maybe. You know, that's a pretty right. substantial well. document that, mm -hmm. and we're current that may have may have been left behind in the course of doing some, you know, like you said, fairly creative revisions in our zoning bylaws. Yeah. But we, you know, it's, it takes a lot of work to do both. Yes. Even though they do work together. I don't have a problem with drafting. I actually had to do that in my last position. I had, to actually, rules and regs? Well, I had to go through the subdivision rules and regs and <coughs> actually sort of compare and contrast to other communities and then update them accordingly. Can I ask why you left your last, last position? It seemed to be a pretty good one. Uh, a good reason? <laughs> no, a good, good position. <laughs> a good job? For um, a well, there are numerous reasons, but uh, to condense it quickly, um, the department, we had. This was in North Reading. This Brighton. is in just North Reading, I'm just sorry. Just the edification be, of the member of some people. To be, I'm sorry. To All right. Um, to clarify, name there was, the, please name the position. Where there was, I, I was a community planning director, community planning administrator. There was an assistant planner slash GIS position, and then there was um, a secretary. And the assistant planning position in North Reading, right? in North Reading yes. The assistant planning um, position was cut, and there was sort of an internal struggle. DPW, I think, was trying to take it. So when the person left for two years, that position remained vacant. And in addition to that, there was, uh, well, like I said, it was a myriad of things, but there was some political struggle between the planning board that was elected and the town administrator. And at the same time, I had some personal issues, and it just sort of all kind of came together, and I was laid off. So. I would go into further detail, but no, that's it's, I, is that, I don't know if that, that's enough. May I answer your question? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's, I mean, obviously you were very, you were very open with our town administrator about yes. uh, references and so forth, so there was no issues with, uh, with that. Um, the tough question, number 10. With your experience, yeah, the other question. Um, Jean? Eleven. Eleven. <coughs> I think we already know this one, too. I know, we can go. <laughs> but we're, we're going by the, uh, by the rules. We have to be consistent. Um, the Raleigh Planning Board is a busy town board. We have numerous filings for special permits, site plans, and subdivisions. Please describe your experience working on these types of filings. Um, sure. Well, I have reviewed subdivisions up to approximately 60 lots at a time. Uh, that was in North Andover. That was on mid sort of the building boom. Um, site plans, I I actually worked on the Lucent building, which was the old AT&T mm -hmm. in North Andover. That's over a million square feet. Um, special permits, wire, wireless, I'm trying to think back, but there was something. Um, well, special permits were site plans. There were special permits in North Reading. Uh, they weren't in North Andover. Um, there's pretty much no type of application, whether it's a Form A, a subdivision, an OSRD, any kind of special permit under 489 that's regulated by the county that I haven't written reviews on or reviewed. Steve, I'm going to go back to you on 16, 17, 18. So. All right, didn't forget. Which of you are interested in the, anyways in those things? So, go ahead. Oh, we're not going to let Cliff go? Not, not yet. <laughs> not yet? Okay. So you want me to change my glasses again? Bummer. Let me on off. Well, on off. <laughs> uh, please explain your knowledge of land use planning. How have you used land use planning in your prior work experience? Um, well, my knowledge of land use planning is, I would categorize it as very extensive. Um, but if you're looking for like the basic land use planning in terms of long-range planning, or if you're just looking for land use planning as it applies to reviewing projects, um, I've done both. I've written master plans, I've helped conservation write open space and recreation plans, reviewed and rewritten regulations of a numerous type. Um, and land use planning itself, I'm familiar with 40R, I permitted a project for that, with 43D, which is the expedited permitting growth law, in addition to all the regular 
special permits under 40A, as well as any projects under the subdivision control law 4181. Um, I don't know if you want me to be more expensive or. I think that's good, right, Kurt? No, you dropped a few numbers there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The right yeah. number. Cliff? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, where are we? 13? 13. Um, can you describe the major differences between special permits and site plan review approvals and also whether you think uh, those two processes should be conducted concurrently or separately? Sure. Um, site plan reviews in most communities are generally issued by the planning board. I think when I looked up here, it mentioned the planning board, zoning board, and board of selectmen. Um, I'm not quite sure I figured that out entirely yet. <laughs> but I did, <laughs> I, I'm just well, being honest. But, um, what, a special permit to me? Yes. Right. It's mainly the planning board. It's mainly the planning okay. And then, um, by foot by far. but for a lot of communities, like an earth removal bylaw could be like the zoning board of appeals. But a special permit has strict criteria that's usually laid out in the zoning bylaw that a project has to meet or not meet to get issued a special permit. Um, a site plan, and again, it depends on whether, like in some communities I've worked, it's actually a special permit. But assuming for purposes of this question it's not, then you also have to meet the criteria of the site plan regulations, which are usually listed. Um, at the end of the regulations. But the major difference is site plans are typically used for business, retail, industrial. Special permits um, can also be done for that, but generally they tend to be more of an overlay district. Most special permits I've ever issued are like wireless and they're an overlay district mm -hmm. on top of a residential or another type of district. Okay, but. Um I'm trying not to talk, talk fast because I'm not trying to um, Massachusetts zoning law is considered by many to be quirky, confusing, and not conducive to good land use development. I'd like you to assume that you had the ability to unilaterally change anything in that law. Can you think of any changes you'd like to make or would make? I would have to say the time. In my opinion, the time frame, um, the time frame given for applications for special permits, because it's 60 days, I'm trying to think back, 60 days of public hearing and then 90 days to make a decision. And I, per I personally don't think that that is necessarily helpful to an applicant or a planning board necessarily. I think I would rather see it shortened or at least match the intent of the expedited permitting law so that most of the boards that give decisions on projects, such as like, we'll just say conservation, planning and zoning, have similar time, have similar time frames so that a project can actually get expedited and pushed through quickly. To me, that's one of my bigger pet peeves. My other pet peeve is under the rezoning process, under 489. I really don't think it's fair that abutters aren't notified. I know it, it's the law. I know that we can just send it out to the abutting communities, but if I had a piece of property and next door to me, someone was gonna rezone it to be the adult use entertainment, I don't wanna have to just know that it was in the newspaper and then, and then find out after town meeting. And it does happen. It, do, well, it does, and I, I feel genuinely bad for people. Not everyone reads public hearing notices, so, but those, those are two things that I would consider mm -hmm. changing. Um, Steve? Oh, yeah. uh, <clears throat> I've really collaborative projects with these town committees, local nonprofits, state or federal government that you believe the planning board should work to accomplish? Oh, God. I can think of a bunch of different ones, but, um, well, generally speaking, I would think, oh. all right, I'm going to have to say maybe something sort of like CPA in the sense that if you have a community preservation project that's historic, um, and or actually, let's say an open space parcel. So in order to actually, assuming you already adopt the CPA, which you have, um, so you, you want to go ahead and send the parcel to the time meeting to be purchased. So you have um, Mass Historic and or the Department of Conservation and Recreation, we'll say as potential grant funds sources. So you're already working with two state governments. Then you have CPA, then you also have to involve town meeting, and you have all these layers of municipal government. And those actually usually, like the planning board doesn't get, get to get too involved in. You're sort of on the periphery of it when you really think about it. But I, I think the planning board should be involved with it because 
that's what long range planning is all about. That's the whole essence of of planning. So at least that's a good point. It, it, that's just something that comes to mind off the top of my head. Um, I hope it answered your question. Mm -hmm. Uh, the town needs to expand its commercial tax base while at the same time to affect the planning and zoning, retain the small town scenic characteristics converted, coverted by residents. What role should the planning board play in achieving the balance? Well, under your master plan, you're supposed to achieve both, which uh, is always difficult because there's a natural push and pull when you put those two together. But I do think you are... You are you do play an integral role in economic development because you are supposed to work with the board of selectmen and the town to help expand its tax base and um, keep your tax rate down. But I think primarily, and you should be looking at that for long range planning, and you could make recommendations to the board of selectmen for ideas like tax increment financing or other alternatives that they can make. I think it also ties into transportation. But to go back to the original question, I think. Your role is both, but I think under your current rules and regulations, you're primarily more there to protect the historical integrity of the town. That, that's the way I've read your regulations. If in an ideal world I can answer that question, you should 50% support both. That, that's what you're supposed to do. Do you want to add anything to that question? Hmm? How well do you know where are we? I, I've just researched the regulations online um, before I interviewed. What are we so doing right and what are we doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I did glean was your biggest employers were Market Basket. I forget who the second largest one was. Was it at some sort of glass company? Yeah. Oh, man. And then it was the town. And usually, there's usually like one through eight, and then it's the town, or the school, and then the town, however you want to list it. So, um... I'm going to go out on a limb and say that maybe if you have at least one parcel in town, one parcel that overall, like most people agree on, that you go ahead and designate that parcel for the 43D status, for the expedited permitting, and you have all the boards and committees meet, you have one member from each board and committee, and you make the commitment to do the 180-day expedited permitting on that parcel because that sends a huge message to developers that they're going to actually get it a decision one way or the other after 180 days and um, I think a lot of developers especially in this economy they don't want to waste their time or money going to a town that hasn't made a commitment back and that's just a show of commitment by a zoning bylaw amendment is that what we're doing right or wrong <laughs> I haven't seen that you have <laughs> I'm not doing it so <laughs> Well, I mean, that, it, I made it sound simple, but that takes a lot of collaboration between, yeah, between not just a lot of different departments, but a lot of boards. That's Plus, just, can it be a, just a parcel? Or does that it can be, be a few parcels. I, it can be a few always, different parcels. I always look at it as a section of the town. No, nope, I actually, uh, one community I know has one in one end of town and the other end of town. Yeah. But you don't get the extra money from the size? state. Is there a minimum size? No, nope, you just don't. You actually get, it was originally 150000 um, that the, the state would give you. I, oh, my. It's been since reduced to 100000 Right. But it was really cool because then you could spend the money on, I shouldn't have just said cool on TV, but, no, but you can spend the money um, to promote expedited permitting. So what we did was we bought um, iPads and then we bought DPW and the engineering department, like one of those large scanners, so that when we did our packets, the selectmen, all the selectmen and all the land use boards had iPads, and then we would just send it so you had everything in place for the so meeting, like you just brought your iPad with you? Up, yeah. yeah. It goes up on the screen. Too. Yes. Yeah. Maybe that's our denim there. Uh, do you have anything you would like to uh, ask the board or add to your interview? Nope, I don't think so. Just that um, I'm really, really, Especially the members that I'm really interested in the position. I, I do think you have, you've done, <coughs> you've done a lot of creative planning that you know, I mean, technically, by population, you might be considered a small town, but you're ahead of the curve compared to a lot of bigger towns. And that's what makes it so interesting to me, because I think that it, it shows your commitment to your residents. And that's it. Where were you, North Reading? I was in North Reading, yes. What's the population out there? Uh, it was about 13,000. 13. Yeah. I don't know if it was the last census, but it was then. Well, I didn't know it was that big. Yeah. yeah.
you know, you, you, you mentioned when you first sat down uh, that you're interested in this position because you like the, the 22 hours works well into your family schedule. It does. Uh, if a 40 hour position opened up uh, the next town over in six months, would that be something you'd be pursuing? No. I have no, like, um, I was asked, like, at the original screening committee, mm -hmm. um, I have no desire to go back to a 40 hour position that is actually really going to be 60 to 70 hours okay. a week. I know how that. I know how that is. I know in like, you know, another town, if it's like 35, 40 hours a week, it's salaried that you're going to be working 60 to 70 hours a week. It's but if this grew, you wouldn't be adverse to that. But what? If this grew <laughs> hour-wise, no. If, no. If the number of hours. I, I just, I, I would, hours. yeah, no, I just. 25, I, 35. I, I just want to, no, I just want to work part-time. That's it, flat amount of hours. That's, that's okay. my goal. I mean, I don't care if it's like 23 one week and 21 the next, don't get me wrong, but I don't, I don't want to go back to working 60 So you're familiar with comp time, vacation time? Yes, all that good stuff. Many yep. years of municipal government. Yes. So you know all the we don't have that stuff. here, do we? Yeah. Sure, you want to go back to work? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you an artist? <laughs> That's funny. Um, any other questions? Because now we... Uh, we have to meet as a group now and uh, talk. So. All right. well, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming. Oh, no problem. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. It was nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting the other members. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. Thank you. No. No. Step in line. So the deliberation is um, an open session, correct? Yes. It can't be executive session. No. no. So I think it would probably uh, behoove the board to maybe review any notes you made from the interview and look at the package again. Um, um, you have two very well qualified candidates. The screening. You want to weigh in? The screening committee put forward two very well qualified candidates. So I think it comes down to now, um, which is the best fit for your board, um, and and looking at. Uh, your work styles and what your, your expectations of the position are and in taking each candidate and thinking of how they are going to work well with you to get your work done. So I, I think I think they're just they're both uh, well qualified for what we have in Raleigh. You know, our needs are in Raleigh. Um, well, I, I, I'd first like to raise the question, do we have to do this tonight? Um, Seems to me like it's kind of rushing it, but I understand, you, especially you, Kurt, want to get something. Right, but I, but I think it should too. be talked about more than just tonight. Mm -hmm. I think we should set a meeting just for this issue. I don't know, Kurt. What do you think? I know you're. you're, you're I know well, we have one other thing tonight, but um, if you, if the group, we can do that. We can meet another night. I mean. I mean, we, we want to hire somebody, somebody we'll but as we, the goal is to have well qualified. That's the goal is to allow somebody. Now it's what the fourth. Yeah. People need, if, you know, give two weeks or more if they have jobs. They have to uh, give people notification. What on are you it. thinking about? Quick, but you know, well, Christmas. I think we should Christmas. Be discuss a little bit tonight and, and another night. Now that it's fresh on everybody's mind, where well, we just went over the two candidates. I mean, I yeah. think some of the, oh, some okay. of it should be discussed. No, it's fine. Yeah. I, I don't want to rush. Such an important decision. No, I don't in, either. In eight minutes. <laughs> no, but uh, I think we, part of it should be discussed tonight where we just went through the um, well, we have process. Eight, well, we have eight minutes to the I'm next say to make a decision. All right. Right. But however, first of all, people take out the calendars because I would like to know. Uh, um, I wish I had brought mine, but I, uh, I'm tied up on the 25th. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Really? I'm, 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 as usual, it gets scrunched. I have something to eat. Where'd you get such a nice appointment? Oh gee, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can be here. Then. I think I'm open any night except for the twenty, the twenty fourth. You stay still laid off, Clint? Huh? You're not laid off still. Oh no, no, okay. I'm back at work. 
You get paid for all that time. Twelfth is out. Eleventh is out. Let's get that on, on tape every time. Yeah, I think. Right. <laughs> Don't have to answer that question. I'm not. All right. <laughs> Forget. To look at you. We're gonna take that. Um, That's tomorrow. I don't know. I'm open tomorrow. Hey. <laughs> How much so time? Wednesday? I think it has to be the 10th or the 5th uh, the when the tenth. chairman's talking. Or, or the, up the tenth. Is anything happening then? Uh, or the 9th? I don't care if we get it Monday. I want to do it sooner than later. Yeah, no, I yeah. No, I'm the so we only need if, if, if people want to do it tonight, fine. I, I just don't know. No, no, no. The ninth gives some time to think, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some time to think and it also gets it done uh, expeditiously in terms of. Uh, I have no problem with the town administrator who. Well, we're going to need to post the meeting tomorrow morning. Uh, the town clerk. Yeah, so it, so it's going to have to be the night. Tonight, so. Okay, so Monday. Ante up for the night, though, right? Seven yeah. thirty. Is that all right? Yeah. You can do it at seven, but seven thirty. Seven's works okay. Better, right? Anything else on the agenda that night? Seven no. works. Seven works. Seven. No, there isn't. Just no, seven thirty is fine. Seven thirty for everyone. You yeah. get here. It's easier. Seven thirty. Yeah. Seven. Yep. David. Yeah. Seven. So I'll do it at seven. I, seven doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All right. Seven thirty is fine. Okay. And as you know, with that way we can relax. Right. Uh, it so has seven thirty. It has to be posted. Um, uh, I'll post to it tomorrow. Is there anything else you want on the agenda, or just a discussion about the planning board finalists? Um, That's all that we got. Ten. Yeah. Right? Look, I could make. No. I, I could find things in the next just twenty-four ahead. hours, but yeah. I'm not going to. No, because, because we're going to be meeting the. We're meeting on the 18th. Monday the 9th. Um, is that correct? Yes, and that's at 7:30. Okay. You have information in front of you. Um, and we'll also remember, be this has to be um, done in open session, so mm -hmm. no emails and stuff like that. I don't, I don't have to warn this. Mr. Crowd, Chairman, if any of the board members want to reflect or review the tonight's video, that should be on the website. That's Chris, great. Uh, right here is our master is that true? website technician, and he will upload this probably within this a morning. day or two. Do, does anyone will So if you want to watch it on the website, you can look and at also, the candidates again. And also, that means Monday that'll be on TV too, right? Well, we do have a selectman's meeting, so we'll have to see if we can arrange. Uh, we're not sure if anybody else is meeting here. I'm not sure if there is. A Board of Health usually meets occasionally on Mondays, but um, uh, that's the only question I have about Monday. But we'll have to see if we can get coverage. We can get call in. Senior Center. Yeah. Okay. If that's All right. Does anybody have any initial impressions? You don't have. I'm not asking for a polling, but. Um, oh, I think they're both. Uh, you know, and I'll I go around just kind of because both qualified, and I'm sort of betwixt and between myself, so that's why I, I raise the issue of do we have to actually make a decision? Do we have time to reflect on it? In the context of what, um, they're a very different personality. One obviously is hitting the ground running. Um, and don't think of me, think of an entire board. Don't think because it's just I'm chair. I mean, I'm not going to be, the chair is going to be moving. Um, you know, think also in terms of if you were chair, chairman, and had to be work with, the chairman tends to work, as you know, with, with the uh, planner on, uh, on a daily basis, almost, you know. So you have to also think as if you put, you know, empathize and put yourself in the shoes of the chairman and, and which person you would like to work with every day. Well, you know, let, let me ask you this. We, all, we can all talk about both of them until we're, we're all blue in the face. And whichever one we may choose, but is there a trial period? Ninety days. We're not happy. We can say, "Well, it's not working out." Yeah, there's a probationary period. There is. Mm -hmm. How long is that? Um, uh, I'm trying to think for non-union. Um, I want to say it's probably um, three, uh, maybe three months. Three months. Three to six months okay, offhand. Yeah. I, I have, we have different. Uh, probationary periods for union, various contracts, union contracts. So I'm union thinking contract. of a non-union, it's probably about three months. <coughs> Well, that's nice to That's good. Then, well, I think it's very important. You know, with it's, without it's, 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 a great, know, it's a great question. You know, we got their input on the interview, but, you know, we've yet to work with either one of them, so, you know, that's why right. it's, it's good to have a probationary period. Right. Well, yeah. it, it, it seems like Heidi certainly understands the, the scope of the job and like like uh, Kurt said, she's going to hit the ground running and, and fill the position right away. I, I like the idea that she understands putting together uh, 
the scope of the meeting, uh, give, give us some notes on the, on, on the cases that are being presented. That's something that is invaluable, but I'm sure that either candidate could, you know, eventually get to the point where they're able to provide that information. It just seems like she's already able to, you know, familiar with doing that. Right. Well, well first candidate, it, 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 I don't know what to make to pick this, but uh, I, you mentioned something about consulting. I, does, it, does he think he's going to do more consulting than actual you know, the typing and all that stuff and get ready for the meetings? No, I, th you know? I think what he meant by that was that uh, you know, this, would, this would be a part-time job, so on the side, if he had an opportunity to consult with, you know, an, uh, like a, a developer, you know, I'm sure as long as there's no conflict of interest or anything like that, that he would do that as a side see, thing. Yeah. Not, he wasn't talking about consulting with us. That's how I understood. Yeah. That's, I, that's yeah. how I understood. And he had yeah. a number of um, uh, references and, and that Amy was one actually that did um, did the background work on Mr. Baker, but no, he um, he's he's been involved with a number of even Winchester, uh, the planning department. He's doing a lot of pro bono work for for different organizations and to things. get so experience in Massachusetts. Right. I think he's right. got um, so he, I think he's really developing into a consultant in some of that because he actually is a GIS person, which I actually found to be quite impressive. That was a that's a skill that said that. We don't really find it. You wouldn't find it in a small town. We have a heavy reliance on MVPC for that kind of work. So he's got a, a lot of technical skills that are being kind of utilized in a, in a variety of communities in Winchester, yeah, but Arlington. Uh, first, I don't feel we really have a great need for those technical skills yeah. here in Raleigh, but not, not that it's a and bad thing. But. I think you'd have to kind of assess based on what you read on Kirk and what you heard, you know, how fast he could learn, mm -hmm. you know. The mundane, the, the, the stuff that I that I'm still oh, learning, that we're all still learning. Any any member who comes onto a board, I know when I went onto the conservation commission, you don't you don't suddenly know the Wetlands Protection Act or the local Raleigh bylaw. You don't do it. You don't know it. And then all the rules that are associated with it. That's true. And even as chair, I'm learning every day, you know, learning something new. But you have to have the ability to ask questions and make mistakes. <laughs> Yeah, I think, well, there's a lot to learn for, so for anyone who comes in, whether you even an experienced town planner, they still have to learn about Rowley and our rules and our... And get the work done. The town right. and the yeah. people in the town and that sort of thing. So, Most importantly. I mean, he seems uh, intelligent enough to, to, to learn on the job. Right. I don't think... I mean, I should necessarily hold that against him. Definitely impressed with all the money that Heidi's managed to, to uh, get to the town of North Reading in terms of grants from the... Uh, yeah, but you might not get that from for us. Yeah, it's right here. We have right. a different socioeconomic background and right. makeup. So Absolutely. And, and one of our projects was at 40R, which was over a million dollars in one yeah. shot. Yeah. But uh, 40R, in my opinion, would not go well in this town. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there'd be so much opposition to it that it would it would never get off the ground. What is 40R? Well, it's what, what Heidi was talking about, and, and I think it's mainly been used more by bigger cities and towns. But basically, you designate part of your town as a as a separate district, and you allow by right zoning. Um, it's like an enterprise. Which yeah, which so um, you know by right zoning, anyone can build you know pretty much whatever they want as long as it's consistent yeah. with the zoning bylaw, R rather than special permit review, which is what we employ in this town. So you'd be giving up your special permit authority. Well, I see. Yeah. No, to, it's to, to build dent, to build denser developments, right. housing, but, residential. Well, you know, I'm learning. But does it incentivize every day? Yeah. You know, I've been, you know, Condos, apartments, commercial. Right. She said it, yes, which I think for, for that very reason it would not go well well in this town. I mean, right. But on, on the other hand, in her notes, she once. said that it, it took the uh, affordable housing from three percent to ten percent with the one project, which meets the forty B requirements. But not suggest that we ought to consider right. that. Well, that's that, the thing. Yeah. I don't. I don't think. I personally I don't, don't think, think we'll ever, we will never reach forty. B. No, we won't. Well, for one thing, we have sewers, and that's an impediment to large uh, apartment buildings, which is what you have to do. And we are also much quicker than. We are. I think we're quicker than most places. We are. Yeah. Plus, there's just the day-to-day -day mundane clerical work that has to be done, so you can't. You know, you can be like gung ho, and but, but. Part of that job is to be like normal, relaxed, interact with other people in the offices and in the town hall. So you have to think about the personality of the two different people. One it seems to be very more quiet, and another one is very um, enthusiastic and go-getting. So you have to um, 
not not that the, the quieter yeah, so person isn't go getting, yeah. just might be quieter about it. Um, uh, so it, I think it. How is this person going to? We have to think about how is this person going to fit in, right in here with our personalities, our building inspector, the, the zoning board, the board of health, uh, our our conservation agent, and then how is he or she going to um, react with the town hall work and the. There, there are rules for the town that have to be followed. So, you know, it, it we get struck, it struck me that in the notes on Kirk, I think he's described several times by different people as um, soft, easygoing, personable. You know, works well with other people. You know, so it seems like that's a pretty. Um, consistent impression of him. It's the same impression I got from uh, the interviews. But it's very interesting, you know, what I was saying, being chairman. Like, I'm glad actually we're having a little, a few more games because I'm very torn. Even it's very interesting when you go through this process and the second time with the same candidates mm -hmm. and um, and with references in front of you. But as you know, as a chairman, I can be, you know, you can take the short view, the long view, or the, you know, there's definitely. Um, there's definitely very many appealing characteristics of having somebody with so much experience coming in. But at the same time, you know, with a little time, you want I want to take a longer view too for the town. If know? he's going to stay here. No, and we don't know that. His background leaves me a little concerned yes, about yeah, that. He seems to move around a little bit. Well, you know. yeah. well that's because but he says he's staying too. Yeah. His wife's at the Boston Globe. I don't know if she's going any oh, where oh, she's with the Globe. Yeah, well I just they just picked that up in uh, in one of the Brian Alvin from uh, Suffolk, Virginia mentioned that that's why he came up here. Oh, okay. Well that makes me feel a little better. Well, she, yeah, she yeah, is so she, here. I was thinking she's going to the Winchester Gazette or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well, probably it's probably a transfer. So if it's still good move to the New York Times right. or the Washington Post. Yeah. Well, his wife is from here too. She's, she's a business uh, work. She's a business writer, so the, oh. she works for the business section. Of the book. Yes. Well. All right. So we're five minutes over. So I want to do the last. Well, thing. I mean, the same issue may happen with the other. The, the yeah. The candidate you never know. too. You never yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, and again, his life goes on. We asked the question. I mean, I think Heidi made it very clear that this is where. She's going to be kind of, you know, that's where she wants to just kind of land. You know, it was, yeah. it was interesting. After I was, all, the other, mm -hmm. all uh, the other changes. And I asked the question I did, thinking that she's going for a 22 hour job because that's what's available, but when a full time job comes available, that's Thank what she know. jumped to. And she shut that down. Absolutely. But then when you asked the follow up question, she doesn't even want more than 22 hours. Yeah. Right. She made it pretty clear she doesn't want to grow into a 32 hour a week job. Well, I think the town of the administration she, knows that I'd like to have the job grow. I think she may have mis misunderstood. I think she did too. Yeah. Because uh, her response was no, I don't want it. I think I think she didn't understand that you were suggesting it might go to 30 hours or, or something like that. I think if you read, she has. Um, but she doesn't want. She has a history. She has a history and a, and a tendency to uh, put in more. I mean, I think she's feeling you know Tom's can kind of burn you out. Yeah, you know, 22 hours, but the workload that is is 35, and you don't put in, you don't get that much comp. So well, some people, some people are very disciplined. I know Katrina would work extra hours only. She was new. She had a lot of extra things she had to do to organize uh, in the new position, new office. And I think you'll see that she's kind of a work on, you know. So when she said 40 hours and the town wants 70 out of you, shouldn't want that anymore. Well, I understand, I understand yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Perfectly. She's been there, done that, you know, so. And she's got children, the young children. Yeah, I've been there, I don't want to repeat that scenario. So. Sure, sure. Uh, so I don't think. Uh, we, we, we got the honest answer out of her anyhow. Right. I, I don't understand why she left her last job, though. I, the, her answer left me a little bit unsatisfied. And on the other hand, I mean, I mean, if the board... Which was a good planning job, you know, if you want to be a planner. But maybe it was the hours, I don't know. There is a scenario after we meet on Monday, um, can't be really deadlocked, but <laughs> if people want to read, the process was opened up and advertised October 2nd, so it took two months to go to the process the first time. I don't really want to see us have to go through again and re-advertise, but your opinion on that is what? That if there's no decision made by the planning yeah. board on either candidate, yeah. um, I would say we could continue to look through the file, but um, you know it's going to be difficult uh, to recruit and open this I up again. I think we can make it. I can do. Yeah. We make a decision. I just want to 
to say chop. Huh? Chop in the food shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I just want to make an amendment to my working with you because our Why esteemed engineer hmm? is Trace and Portant. I have no idea. I don't know anything about um, any of the other I know. I wish I could. I was we going. can't. I have somebody quite nice. I like it. I remember we had that list back in there. Um, okay, so, right, so you're is done he out there or not? I'm going to bring in your We're done. Uh, you're 920 yeah. appointment and I'll lock up the um, planning box. And also, Th thank, like you, Debbie. Thank, uh, thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you personally for yes. So we'll post the meeting for Monday. At thank you for assisting us in this process. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas. Christmas to you. Thanks. You're ready for you. And and your able assistance. Yes. Uh, we'll have to please the planning board. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. right now yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, of course, I have to go in the. She can't watch that because I have to stop. Mm -hmm. Want me to give her a yell? Uh, yep. Don't, don't lock the door. You're going to lock it. I'll, I'll lock it. As you know, we um, had our, when was our last one? 16th. 20th? Yeah. Doesn't matter. The last meeting we closed the site hearing for artistic land. Are you alone? I am. You don't have an entourage with you tonight? <laughs> okay. Are you, uh, you going to argue for yourself tonight? That's right. Artistic Landscapes LLC, as we all know, um, a 111 new report turnpike. Um, gone through a process that uh, here's, that has resulted in uh, Larry Graham uh, preparing a um, certificate of vote for site land approval. Um, I just want to ask. Decision on the because site plan. Because we have to, and then we have a little vote on both one for the site. Because the, uh, sp the hearing notice reflected them both. Uh -huh. the okay. And the original application with the tree notice here. Right. I'll go back. When I went back and you know, research. Just what I'm talking about here is that um, it's really the same thing because the in the conditions incorporate um, the signage that, as you know, uh, and this is what I want uh, Tony to maybe kind of ref uh, refresh our memories because we went through a lot of other, uh, here, another one, everybody have one? We went through all the other aspects of the project, but our signage bylaws were what, 8.6? Uh, requires a special permit, even though um, it came in together. We look at the original legal notice. It goes back to August 14th. Uh, there's an application of a special permit under Section 8.6. 
tennis and cycling. Um, so, Kara, I'm confused. Um, I don't know. Because it's all, all, all of, we, we, we all went through it in minutes and uh, they discussed. No, no, I, I, but, but, but we have. Tell me whether I have, can do it under one. I have to do it under two. Because it was You're talking about the notice? The applicant, yeah. Like a little child. Yeah, okay, well, okay. no, that's fine. But it was noticed. Okay. So, so the, the, the sign aspect of it was noticed yes. properly. Yes. Right. But the thing that's confusing me is um, I've got one draft decision that only talks about site plan approval, and I've got another draft decision that, special permit, that, that talks about special permit. Just to, just to so, note that the special permit. So is this one, we're not thinking we're doing both? We're doing both? Because one, the sign, even though the signage conditions are already in, they're in both. Almost like the bank. Okay. Remember the bank was the same one. We don't really have to because it's incorporated in this. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. No, we don't have to. I was, I was just ready. I mean, we could probably just do it under the stick could have both and let her vote up. We could what? I'm, not, I'm, I'm just saying, a certificate of both that was written up to me. Right. Incorporates site plan approval. That artistic, right. That, are, that artistic, um, right. The conditions that well, refer to the illuminated signs are several. If you looked at, right? I mean, it seems to me um, that you would have a separate decision for approval of the site plan. And a separate decision for approval of the special permit for the illuminated sign. That's why I have both. Uh, okay. Um, the thing that confused me was, so the other um, letter that deals with the special permit approval um, says, you know, we're approving an application for approval of a special permit, and then it says site plan approval is based on. I mean, I think I would recommend. Yeah, because you just that you just you just have a one site plan approval that deals with the site, and one letter that approves a special permit for for the illuminated sign, yeah. and keep them separate because they are separate issues. And I, the only question I I think you're one just letter dancing around it, but uh, yeah. I know. I was just trying notice, to do it. Uh, yeah. Does the notice uh, that went on well, that was. That was uh, issued back in August. To open up the meeting for both the special permit and the site it, plan it, it, yeah. adequately. Okay, because yes. it does incorporate both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, and and I, but I would otherwise. It just kind of got dropped along the way when the planner left and the right. area and was not in touch with anyone. You know, it kind of get it, it. It became secondary for a while there, and I think Tony brought it back to, and we brought it back to his. Uh, we brought it back in our last meeting. Right. And said it was a condition of, of any approval. Right. Um, but this is more of a housekeeping, you know, this is more of a legal, just right. making sure that you're legal. Uh, so I'll have a letter drawn up if we vote, and I can just, you know, can we, can we vote to close the special permit, you know, or approve the special permit for the site? Well, if we're, if, if we're so agreeable to approve That's it. what I meant. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. the bylaws is in front of you. Yeah. yeah, I think so. And you've had some uh, chance to at this point, since August, to go over the signage bylaw, correct? Not only with uh, with Bill and, and you. So, are you ready to describe how it's in compliance? Yes. Okay. Um, the one of the handouts is a page that looks like this. It looks like this. People. Yeah. So. I think it was back in the August meeting, the sign was not labeled the, of which section okay. was internally illuminated. Mm -hmm. So that was a question then in the minutes, right? Then on August 20th, we amended the drawing to show clearly that only the burgundy background would have the illumination. The lower part that is in white would not be illuminated. And therefore, in being internally illuminated, we're not uplighting, so we're in compliance from that aspect. And we're not up. We're not internally illuminating a white background. Is one of the other stipulations. Right. And then. 
So the entire thing is 16 feet high, right? Correct. You have inches, so maybe put. <laughs> 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 minor detail. You might want to check with your Thank sound you. guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Might be thinking you're getting a deal, but. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> nice spot. Now, in, in addition to this, you're having a, um, uh, a building mounted sign? Correct. And you're, you're requesting a variance from the ZBA to see the area? Correct. Size? So what, uh, how big of a sign do you want to have on the building? Um, I think that was around 28 or 30 square feet. And the way the zoning board approved that size and one of the stipulations in the bylaw is that it cannot be more than 15 linear feet um, a name in length so we're under that and then I think it's 10 square feet or 12 square feet if you take up more than 10 or 12 square feet then you need to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals um, so to put artistic landscapes with all the letters and get it out of font, then you can still see it from one required the variance. This would be your only freestanding sign, right? Correct. See, this is not this is not the way. Look at look at the revision date. Bottom right, almost bottom right. To be December fourth. No. no, October thirty first. Yeah. So get rid of these. <laughs> these are we can NG. Recycle. Well, no, there was copies dropped off originally, oh, okay. but my the copy I had, I gave to you, oh, okay. so I don't have it. <laughs> Go away, okay? Move ten feet from if it is the October thirty first version. Yeah, that's really the only difference. In the well, mass the, the, the uh, guardrail. Correct. Oh, I mean on just the sign. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Mass Highway Department has approved the movement of the driveway. The sure cuts. One of the conditions is that we get it down here. Correct. They left me a message yesterday saying that they're mailing it this week. I think, Tony, what I was thinking about, just to make sure, because we need to sign these plans too, right? You want these signed? Well, I think we were, it's, I don't know what the You should sign them if, if you're going to approve it. You should sign them. But because um, 
The ones that I had had in the office are. Can you come in Monday? Let's just do it Monday. Because that way I can have the letter. No, I want I want to talk and. Um, you know, I want to make sure the sign is what what I can put in the letter because you want that in the form of a letter we we can vote on, right? I I would think so. That's the preferable way to do with it. With these specifications to make sure it's in compliance. Yep. You know, the following plans are in compliance. Are there any other uh, corrections on this? Is this the only one you have for your illuminated sign? Yes. No, we no, but, more. No, I know. This is your only plan for that. Correct. Uh, does the board want him to list why it isn't compliance or any of the, you know, uh, the criteria? Or just you certifying here that it meets the criteria of 8.6? I mean, you know, the eliminated sign bylaws? Because this is going to be something that will be in the record. Okay. Okay? I, I, see. Sir, I mean, I have the bylaws well, here. And well, I know, but you... Yes. Okay. Okay. Because then it's, it reflects the um, letter that we're going to write in your behalf. Okay. Fix the 16. Yeah, yeah. fix, yeah. And yeah. Any, any other the errors? I don't want errors on this plan. Yeah. Does it have to be 16 feet high? Well, we have the grade yeah. um, coming down. Yeah. Right. And with the snow, yeah. with well, the clouds, right. we yeah. have to be above the snow yeah. throw from the right. um, clouds. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we have a six foot three inch. Um, so how much lower is the sign than the street level? Yeah. I think on the inland side, if you will. That's, I think, three feet. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. All right. All right, you can send me an email with a draft letter. Sure. On my behalf, since I don't have. The draft is approval letter? Approval letter. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Th there, well, is, there is a requirement that these be turned off at night. Correct. Right. So I think that should be a condition of the approval. All sign illumination shall be turned off after closing time, not at night. You have this thing. Yeah, yeah, that's in the bylaw. Yeah, so if you can just, you know, say, just repeat the language of the bylaw, say all. Oh, so. Yeah. Subject of the. I'm having Bill and you write, yeah. All right. You get that. I you thought they only. I was you want that. it by Monday, you're going to write it. <laughs> or help. We'll help. We'll help you if you. Online. If you have trouble, I mean, I'll. So all I'm doing is saying, yes, we we will be in compliance. You correct? With yeah, you got to make sure that. That all there's no errors here in yep. terms of feet, inches, whatever. Yep. Okay. okay, and there should be a note on here that says <coughs> compliance with uh, our illuminated sign by like 8.6. Okay. okay, and the letter saying that you know subject to the following conditions according to the bylaw. Yeah, I can only think of one right now. That's that one, all yeah. sign illumination shall be turned on after clo after closing time. Just use the language of the bylaw. And, 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 I, and should, it should be said subject compliance with subject to compliance with um, what do you call this? Not a site plan, but it's a, a drawing uh, or a statement. I think it's yeah. a sketch unless it's an engineer. So I think it's called a sketch. United Sign Company. Sketch. Yeah, they don't really Form. stamp. Yeah, United Sign Company. Um, Dated. Whatever the date is. Did, did I hear you right? That that forty is three feet below street, street level. Yeah. Yes. Usually signs it's three feet below street level. Yeah. They usually would. The grade drops down three feet before you're well, sitting. Well, you the streets up here. More, uh, right. Yeah. Put, more put down sketch. Yes. And then okay. A sketch dated August twentieth, two thousand. Well, it'll be dated tomorrow or something. It's going to fix the sixth. Whatever. Submitted by Artistic Landscapes. The lower part of the sign is at proposed elevation 71, and directly opposite that street level is about 73 and a half, so about two and a half feet. The, the lowest part of the sign, right. the lower post of the sign, if you will. Right. Yeah, because the upper post is a foot higher, so one and a half to two and a half feet lower. I mean, I was wrestling with how I could help you tonight, you know, when <coughs> the fact that we really did apply for a this, separate special permit, right that's just the way it's written. Okay. I can't no. have it. We can vote on the site plan here to the street level. Certificate of vote tonight. So oh, we can do them both Monday, yeah. but we can do oh, that. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but so we'll have, we'll have this is already the street is this is already complete with Larry. Larry. And you guys have this. Okay, so we'll vote on this Monday. I'll put it on there. Because that's not going to be a disadvantage or advantage for you just to do it Monday. Twenty one day yeah, but that's true. We probably should vote on this tonight. All right, so can you guys look at this tonight? The sign thing we've discussed, we can't vote on that tonight. We'll vote on that Monday. 
I do want you to look at this. You're going to tell Debbie to put it on the agenda. I know. I will. For like 720, so we can. Yeah, 720, so we do it before the interview. Thank you. All right. Um, 920? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. What I would like you to uh, pay attention to now is a uh, certificate of vote that uh, Mr. Gray, Larry Graham, our review consultant engineer, has uh, written along with Bill Holt, the uh, engineer, and uh, Mr. Hurley, the applicant, over the course of uh, days and weeks. <laughs> um, and so can the board. I've read this thing. Does anybody else take one of them? You want to say there's any uh, revisions? That no, I, I, made the, I made a couple of revisions which Cliff had suggested. They show up as uh, number four and number... Uh, it should be... Uh, no, it was the... Uh, six. It was, uh, no, it was, um, it was number four. two. Four and two, yes. Yeah. All right, number two, as we discussed before we close here. Again, these reflect our discussion. Yeah. Strictly, I think. Uh, Strictly, that's good. Yeah. Use activities on <laughs> site comply with section 4.72F. Retail sales added on the site are strictly prohibited, which you already had that discussion at the last meeting. Um, While you're on that page, can I ask a question? Sure. Number four. Over here. There's the last sentence or the last line on the fourth talks about full cutoff fixtures. That means <coughs> I'm not sure. What does that mean? <coughs> yeah, yeah. And and this is not your up lights, okay. which you this is not the this is all under a different right. category. Okay. This is if you were to put a spotlight towards yes. the sky. Okay. okay. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Right. This wasn't as part of your uh, what we talked about your um, uh, the up lights on the landscape your landscape are permitted under a section yeah, of the I bylaw. Just want to make sure. Um, I got just see, I think I do see a problem. Shrubbery marketing. Okay. Um, two, it says use activities on the site shall comply with section four point seven point two F. I don't see an F. It should be D, shouldn't it? Oh wait a minute! This is this is the old bylaw. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna okay. So is, is that the landscaping provision? Yes. Yeah. 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 We change it. We change it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is an old uh, version. Anybody have? I don't have one with me yet. But that is. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's here. No. Well, I just it fell out of the book. One more question based on the discussion from tonight. Sure. On number five, uh -huh. E4, limited lighting bylaw enforcement agent. Yeah, Larry, yeah, yeah. We delete that line because that's going to be in the special permit. Yes, I can do it. Correct. Um, I don't, why I don't did, think why, it why, needs why, to go out. Why did, yeah, why did you word that like that? Uh, I have a letter in my file from Frank, uh, Frank and Johnny. Yeah, I think that's, that's what I was yeah, I think you're misunderstanding it, Anthony. Yeah, that is not, that's not really a regular, that's more of a follow-up okay. upon installation okay. than it is uh, an initial regulatory sure. um, bylaw-related issue. Okay. Because we have run into some compliance issues upon construction. In the past, and we do have someone check those out okay. and to help out the building inspector. So that's more in line with that. Does anyone have the current bylaw? I think this is still out of date. Oh, <laughs> it, it doesn't have the F, and, and this is uh, as of April 2012. So I think I think we changed it in 2000, spring of 2013. No, that's the last one Katrina gave. You sure? Yeah. Oh. Does anyone have the current one? Not on me, but I have no. it. I have it. No. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Trust me, I'm oh, it's well, you, said, oh, you, you said you look what? You know what? I think I if Larry it. said it, that he that he looked, I think that F is right, I'll take it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I think this on that particular item we're discussing. Right. I think the special permit that they're going to do is going to trump that. Okay. It, it, you you will have then got approval of this board okay. for the in, internally lit illuminated center. Yeah. So yeah. Right. So, yeah. We would like to have overlay to this part of the the whole plan. That's fine. It is actually a structure on the site, you know, and, and 
it's a substantial structure on the site. So we'd like to kind of cover, but it's not going to really affect um, from a regulatory standpoint. It's not going to make things more difficult for you. No. So. Larry, you say tell me it's half on time. Oh, it used to be there. I looked at the retail. I know the last time I thought I would look at that. Oh, there's the that's the old one. I've got the <laughs> old, I've got the old one in here, but uh, I've got the new one back in the shop. It's totally revised on the website, right? Because that's what it should be. Yeah, I think that's where I saw the retail. Yeah, because I went on the website. Well, when I was looking at this. Yeah. I'm 100% correct. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, does anybody have any comment, other comments based on, you know, we've been on the site, we've had a site <laughs> visit. Um, you've seen the plans, we had the discussion about changes in elevation. I know uh, Steve still has reservations based on the fact that he really, because it drops off so quickly, really can't achieve a kind of turn, you know, a slow down, turn off lane. Um, it was kind of interesting that turn off lane down the street. Well, There's yeah. a telephone pole in the middle of it, so I like to see Well, I'm gonna sure it's going to be moved. It's <laughs> just a matter of the time, you yeah. know. It's, I mean, I still, so, that's but, still what I'd like to see, you know, otherwise. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not okay behind that point of view, and it's, but, um, you get enough lead time coming from, but I mean, this, the, the uh, coming north, I think. So I want to entertain, I want to, because it's a 21 day period and this has been going on already since uh, September, August, August. Um, we still have to do the sign on Monday, uh, but I think Larry has made the recommendation, um, or is making a recommendation as a review consultant that we're ready for a vote on the site plan. Somebody, yep. Somebody make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the site plan approval. Second. Second by David Jake with motion by Cliff Pierce. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? No. Uh, opposed? Uh, Steve Cassiotis. Um, so it's one, two, three. Oh. Yeah, three. Four. Four. Um, so you know, we'll do, we'll do that on Monday. Um, to the sign. To the sign. There's one other thing. It's going to have to go on. Oh, and also, we have to, we'll sign the plans on Monday, too. Sure. How many copies of the plans do you want? Three. Three? Three. Three. And we'll do that at 720. Is that okay with you? Yep. <coughs> and I'll, I'll be in touch. But I want this cleaned. I really don't want to prove something that has so, errors on it. You know, it needs to be. Do you need notification for this Monday meeting? Uh, Debbie's got a Oh, is this just a continuation? No notice. No, no, because it's already been noticed back okay. in August. Two weeks. Oh, under section 8.6. 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 Um, we'll also do the uh, minutes from the last meeting on Monday, which oh. is good. And have, have you sent those out? Or no. Did you give them to us? No, the minutes from the last one. From the last meeting. From the last meeting, yeah. Yeah. The last meeting you have them yeah. two meetings ago. Right. So we can at least approve those. The uh, town assistant administrators are working furiously from the um, DVDs to make sure yes. the minutes from, so we're not two minutes, behind, you know, two meetings behind. Uh -huh. And we know what that's like, and we haven't had that for a while, so I'll take a motion well, to adjourn. I just want to say it was a good meeting. Do you have the certificate of vote? you have the certificate of vote that you need for Monday? You don't need my account. I'll try it again. Right? No, I do. So you can get rid of the one that's got special something on it? Yeah, I got rid of that. All right, thanks a lot. That was a couple. Thank you. Gene, don't forget your coat. Yeah, thank you, David. I thought it was I gone forever. I still forgot it. Claire's dish. All those in favor, well, that's right. right. I just thought of it. I, I meant to pair them up, but I didn't. And thanks for coming, Monday. I thought it was a good recommendation to kind of give it a let's keep it.